solo home run. Touchdown by Bill Clinton. Fake hit. Fake hit. Scoring is Earls. Strike three. Forget about it. Solo home run. And Navy is the 2016 Patriot League champion. A beautiful day for championship baseball in Worcester, Massachusetts, says the Holy Cross Crusaders look for their first ever Patriot League title, and the Bucknell Bison look to do it as a four seed for the third time, and the only team that has ever won the Patriot League title as the number four seed in the championship series. Welcome inside Hanover Insurance Park at Fit and Field. Alongside Justin Antwell, I'm A.D. Town, and it was a great day yesterday as well. The baseball on the field just as great in a very competitive ball game, which Holy Cross won 4-3. to three. A compelling contest. Amazing to think, Andy, it's the 14th time this season that Holy Cross has played in a one-run game. Let's flash back to game one, take a look at the highlights. It started in the fourth inning with sweet swing and Sammy Clark launching his team leading seventh home run of the season. He flexed his muscles early for the orange and blue to arm staff face Connor Van Hoos with an early lead, but the lead would be no more in the fifth inning. Two unearned runs come across the board for the Holy Cross Crusaders. They take advantage of an error by Danny Rafferty. They would tack on some insurance runs in the eighth inning. Those proved to be much needed runs. They would need every one of those to end up winning this game, including a booming RBI double by three-time first team all league selection Anthony Fratelli, a finalist for the Senior Class Award. But Bucknell, they're an immensely tough team, a lot of grizzled veterans. They mounted a comeback. Chucky Scales was able to flare one to left. Some clutch hits from Evan Klugerman and John Paul Bell. And Brett Smith, he had the golden sombrero his first four at-bats, was able to wipe the slate clean with a clutch double. Danny Rafferty had the tying run on third, the go-ahead run on second, but he lofts out to left field as Holy Cross with some emotion ends up winning four to three, surviving in game one. But the king of the hill for the Holy Cross Crusaders was Brendan King. He was outstanding, over seven innings pitch. He struck out eight, that tied a season high. He dazzled the mound. That breaking ball was working really well for him. And he's put Holy Cross in a position to do something that the purple and white have not done in 39 years, Andy. And that's go to the NCAA tournament. They're eyeballing their first ever Patriot League tournament title. Oh, Mike Castellani will try and at least force a game three for the Bucknell Bison. He had a complete game shutout last week against Navy to get the Bison into this Patriot League Championship Series. And he has been fantastic all season long. Six wins already for Bucknell. And then on the other side for Holy Cross, it'll be Joe Cravero. He also won game two. That was against Army last weekend. And that's what got Holy Cross into this situation. He's got three wins looking for number four to send send Holy Cross to the Patriot League title for the first time in school history. Bison and Crusaders coming up next, battling for the Patriot League Championship on the Patriot League Network on Campus Insiders. The beginning of what could be a very eventful 24 hours for the Bucknell Bison, or it could be very eventful for the Holy Cross Crusaders as they look for their first Patriot League title Bucknell looking to sweep a doubleheader today before graduation tomorrow. But the, today they are in Worcester, Massachusetts for the Patriot League Championship Series. Alongside Justin Antwell, I'm Andy Town. And you know, this should be a fantastic day for baseball. Temperatures in the mid-60s. Hardly a cloud in the sky here at Hanover Insurance Park at Fitton Field. And Holy Cross changing up, or actually Holy Cross is going with the same exact batting lineup that it's had in all four games now of the Patriot League tournament, both games last week against Army and yesterday against Bucknell as well. Starting out the top of the first inning, you saw there Josh Hassell, Bill Schlick, and Austin Mazel. They'll go up against Mike Castellani, who had a complete game shutout, his third of the season last week against the Navy midshipmen. 71 innings overall through 12 appearances. 11 of those have been starts, so he will make his 12th start of the season here this afternoon, and he is ready to go. Josh Hassell, the right fielder, stepping into the box, and we are moments away from first pitch on the Patriot League Network. Castellani, one of seven seniors on the Bucknell Bison, trying to book in their tenures. They won as a freshman in 2014, and he's trying to do the same their senior year in 2017. First pitch called strike at 12.06 p.m. 63 degrees and sunny. Castellani getting ahead of his first batter. 
Again, Holy Cross making no changes in the order as Hassell pops one up high in the air left side. Battling the sun is the shortstop. Johnson can't get there, and that's a base hit for Josh Hassell. Just a tough play where that ball was placed. That's off the end of the bat, kind of in between shallow left fields. Easier to come in the ball than drift back. John Paul Bell did not see it off the end of the bat, and Hassell dinks one to shallow left field. Good start for Holy Cross. Yesterday, Connor Van Hoos had a perfect game heading into the fourth inning. Much better start for the purple and white. Bill Schlick will come up. He's going to have to deal with similar plays to that today, like that today. He'll be out in left field for the Holy Cross Crusaders. Throw over to first is not in time as Josh Hussell dives back safely and quickly as soon as the runner gets on base, Bucknell paying attention to the runner against the team that really hasn't been all that much of a threat on the base pass this year. Now they did have a timely steal though yesterday. They don't steal often, but they steal them wisely. They had that huge steal that led to the two run single for Hassell. It armed Holy Cross with a lead and they would never look back to attack on some key insurance runs late. Schlick did square around the bunt, pulled it back for the pitch on the outside corner, called strike one. And it's a guy in Castellani who operates from the stretch even with nobody on. So he's used to pitching from this kind of delivery. He was a reliever his first two years. Actually started the year, Andy, as the number four starter for the Bucknell Bison. But you talked about he has already thrown uh, three complete game shutouts, two in the regular season. And pitching coach Jason Knights and head coach Scott Kether uh, moved him up in the pitching order to the number two slot. Lefty goes home and it's fouled off by Schlick. Castellani this year is 6-1 with a 3.30 ERA. Just a 1.21 whip. Walks and hits per inning pitched. And throw all four pitches. Scott Heather pretty happy with his changeup this season. He's got movement on the fastball, curveball, slider, and changeup. Another throw over to first, and they're really excited to try and get after himself. They are, and you look, you think back to last month, Bucknell lost three of four right here at Fit and Field, and the only game they won, it was started by Mike Castellani. So that has to bode well for the orange and blue. Lefty misses outside, took something off it. It's a ball and two strikes. Slick up at the plate. He really can hit from anywhere from first to sixth in the order has this year. All tournament long, he's been in the number two spot behind Hassell. Another throw over to first. That's probably, what, the fifth one of this at bat <laughs> already? And the good news for the Bucknell Bison, look, yesterday was a tough one. They had the lead. They had their ace in the mound. Uh, they let it get away, but they had less than 24 hours to dwell on it, and sometimes that's the best remedy. you got to quickly turn the page and play baseball. Once again over to first, and Hassell really is not even all that far off the bag. Now yesterday, first pitch at 5.05 p.m. Today, scheduled for 12.05. Swing and a miss for Schlick, and he is down on strikes. First K this afternoon for Mike Castellani. Yeah, just blew some cheddar by him. He's got swing and miss type stuff. Castellani was an all-star in the Coastal Plains League uh, last summer for the Wilmington Sharks. Just, uh, he's been successful everywhere he's been. Cerebral pitcher, taking a look at the replay, just waving a miss for Schlitt. Castellani, not a big time strikeout guy, about six per nine innings this year, matched the season high of six strikeouts last week in his complete game. Another throw over to first, and while we have a moment, let's actually take a quick look at the defense for the Bucknell Bison. We'll give it after this pitch coming up to Mazel. Austin Mazel in the box and the breaking ball in there at the bottom corner of the strike zone for a called first strike. John Paul Bell is in left field. Brett Smith in center. Chucky Scales is in right field for the Bison. Sam Clark on the infield at third base. Luke Johnson at short. Evan Madigan starting today at second with Danny Rafferty at first base. And Evan Klugerman is behind receiving for Castellani. You think back to 2010, Andy, championship series, four seed Bucknell, three seed Holy Cross. It was Holy Cross that won game one and Bucknell won the next two. Big swing for Mazel. it's nothing in two. And you have to think that's in the back of Coach Heather's mind. He was an assistant that year with the Bucknell Bison, their recruiting coordinator and pitching coach. And he took over the coaching duties five years ago as the head, head coach. 
Now with the four-team tournament in his six-team league as Maisel swings and misses strike number three, second strikeout of the afternoon for Castellani. With four teams making the tournament now since 2008 in a six-team league, you really just have to get into the tournament, and then you really never know what happens. And I think both these teams are built for May and June baseball, Andy. You know, they have two top in the pitchers in Bucknell and Van Hoos and Castellani in Holy Cross and King and Crevero. Anthony Critelli steps up, the first baseman from the right side. A lot of early swings for Holy Cross today. Saw Hassell lay off the first one and then put one high in the air to left field. Got a little bit of help from the sun. There's a foul off the plate, off the body of Critelli, picked up by Klugerman and down to first, but nothing to do there as the ball went off the plate and must have touched somebody in foul territory. Critelli ended up driving in the game-winning run yesterday. He drove in the fourth run of the game for Holy Cross in that bottom of the eighth inning, a booming double in the right center field alley. Second all-time in home runs. He's just one of the all-time greats to suit up for the Crusaders. He would love to end his four-year tenure with a ring on his finger. Not the first time he's driven in a winning run. <laughs> Again, a throw over to first. First team All-Patriot League three straight years for the first baseman, Anthony Critelli. 15 career RBI in Patriot League tournament play. Preseason player of the year. Couldn't quite get top honors in the league this year, but a very solid season nonetheless as he watches the ball go by outside. And you, we talked to Coach Desenzo earlier in the week, and he said, you know, our guys aren't worried about individual accolades. You know, this is about the team. These 13 seniors want to do something that's never been done in Holy Cross history. And this is the 24th ever Patriot League tournament. He is just a couple doubles away, a home run shy, and a few total bases away from putting his name at the top of a few Holy Cross records. But the only way he's really going to be happy is if he get the, gets those records en route to Holy Cross wins. Hard line drive, but right at the second baseman, Evan Madigan, who makes the grab to end the inning. Just a little bit of movement for him. And we are through half an inning of play. The Bucknell Bison coming up to bat for the first time today on the Patriot League Network on Campus Insiders. Back at Hanover Insurance Park at Fitton Field as Joe Cravero warms up. He'll be taking on Brett Smith to lead things off for the Bucknell Bison. And here's the rest of the lineup as well. Danny Rafferty batting second. Sam Clark is hitting third home run yesterday. Luke Johnson cleaning up John Paul Bell right in the center of the order. Kiefer Rawlings, Evan Klugerman, Evan Madigan, and Chucky Scales round out the bottom half of the Bison order. Joe Cravero making his 14th appearance this season. 57 and two-thirds innings has been pretty consistent this year for the Holy Cross Crusaders. Looking for another win out of him. He's three and three this season. Had the victory last week against Army in the Patriot League semifinals. Looking to close out this series here as well with the win over Bucknell for a championship for the Holy Cross Crusaders. First pitch is a strike to Brett Smith. And he gets ahead. Always good to start the game with a first pitch strike. Crevero leads the team in strikeouts, has swing and miss stuff, features a fastball, breaking ball, and a changeup. Foul off to the right side and quickly nothing in two. And he has to have some confidence. Andy, you mentioned he picked up the win against uh, Army last weekend. And, you know, he also defeated Bucknell in the regular season back on April 23rd. A quality start, six and two-thirds innings, just three runs yielded. His only start that he's made against Bucknell in his career had two relief appearances last season. This is a little bit down and away. He is 2-0 and oh if it hits four runs allowed. Three walks, seven strikeouts in 11 and a third innings against the Bison over the last two years after not seeing Bucknell as a freshman or a sophomore. Brett Smith had a tough day at the office yesterday. Had the golden sombrero his first four at bats, but he's a career 300 hitter, hitting 320 this season. Last 26 games, he's really turned it on after a slow start in 4-15. And made up for the 0 for 4 early on when he had the clutch double late. But there's another strikeout 
As Brett Smith continues his struggles this series. Joe Cravero gets off to a hot start. Two strikeouts in the top of the first for Mike Castellani as well. See how many Ks each pitcher can rack up today. Rivero a little bit more of a strikeout pitcher than Castellani is. And his first K is Danny Rafferty comes up here and swings at the first pitch. Knocked off to the left side out of play. Danny Rafferty had a chance to give the Bison a lead, maybe a tie yesterday. Made the final out of the game with a tying run on third and the go-ahead run on second base, but he lofted one in the left field to end game one. Hard liner for Rafferty, and this is through to right field for a base hit. And Bucknell has a runner on. So each team gets a runner on base in the first inning. Holy Cross was unable to score, and Sam Clark yesterday had the big swing that got the Bison on the board. We'll take another look at his home run that he hit yesterday, got Bucknell going, and you know, every run was very important in yesterday's game for both sides. They sent it over the left field fence. See Austin Mazel chasing it back there, but realized pretty quickly that he was going to run out of room before the fence. He just has such a sweet swing, leads the team in home runs, a 309 average for a power hitter. And he definitely is somebody who could be drafted next month. Swing there for Clark. The ball and a strike after the first pitch from Cravero missed. Runner on first is Rafferty af after the single. Carroll looks in and misses once again, two and one. Sam's so even keel. Uh, his teammates were all fired up for him, but when he crossed home play yesterday, he was pretty nonchalant. Uh, he's hit a few home runs over his tenure, so maybe he's used to taking that trot around the base pass. But that's what the coaches love about him. He's not going to get too upset about himself. High fly ball, right field. This is back. This is deep. This is gone. Another home run for Sam Clark, a two-run shot to get Bucknell on the board in the bottom of the first inning. Four for four on the weekend. Andy, he crushed that over the Papachino sign onto the football field. And his teammates are fired up for him. Once again, Sam just pretty nonchalant, crossing home. But Matt Castellani has to be smiling ear to ear. He's armed with an early lead, but take another look. Let's see. Yeah, he was sitting on a fastball up and in, and he turned on it. The right fielder glided back, and he says, you know what? Whoa, what a shot. 400-plus feet blast. That landed in the end zone, called a two-point <laughs> conversion. Here's Luke Johnson coming out the leadoff man with nobody on following the two-run homer by Sam Clark. Absolutely smoked out to right field. Yesterday it was opposite field to left center. And this time it clears the Papagino sign out in right. Yeah, the fans were still trying to find that baseball. It went so far, I don't think they can get out of the football field. It might be locked up, but that was just the 19th home run hit by Bucknell this season. By far the fewest in the Patriot League, and Sam Clark has hit eight of them. So he's almost hit half of them. Number 20 as a squad, including his yesterday. Hard hit line drive left field all the way to the corner. This will be extra bases. Luke Johnson turning and going for second. He will stop there. And Thomas Russo had to pay attention pretty quickly there as that ball was going to nobody. So a double for Luke Johnson and the Bucknell Bison are jumping all over Joe Cravero. Even Danny Rafferty's hit was pretty well hit out into right field and that will bring Greg Desenzo out to the mound. The infield will join everybody on the pitcher's mound. He's just keeping the ball up right now. You look at the base hits to Rafferty, Clark, and Johnson. They're squaring it up. They're teeing it off. Here's the pitch to Johnson. It was up letter high. He was able to turn on it and punch it down the left field line. And, you know, big picture, you look at Bucknell baseball, why it's been so successful over, you know, the last 15 years since Scott Heather's been there, player development. These kids get better. I mean, Luke Johnson was a 161 hitter, Andy, his first two years. He's been hovering around 280 his entire junior campaign. We've seen Kiefer Rowlings make great strides. We'll see him a little bit later on. And Chucky e. Scales as well was exclusively a pinch runner his first two years, and he's come on strong his third year at the varsity level. 
and Coach Desenzo. He's a busy man because he also serves as the pitching coach for the Holy Cross Crusaders. And uh, a, a, a timely mound visit just to calm down his veteran. Two runs already in in the inning with the two-run shot by Sam Clark. And then the double bringing up John Paul Bell, the switch hitter, who we'll see from the left side against a right-handed pitcher. He saw over 20 pitches yesterday in his four at-bats. I mean, he worked the count really nicely. Had a nine-pitch at-bat in the second inning. Change up a little bit off the plate. And a first pitch ball. Once again, Cravero behind. The coaches rave about Bell's maturity for a freshman. One of just two freshmen in the starting lineup for the Bison. Big swing there. Again, working the outside part of the plate against the lefty is Cravero. Try and use all his pitches. Some very well hit balls off of him so far through the first four batters of the game. Three in a row after getting the strikeout to Brett Smith. Breaking ball falls through for a called strike. A ball in, two strikes now. First inning runs have been big in Holy Cross games lately. We'll try and not let the two runs that Bucknell has here in the first get to them. Outside again to even the count. And both teams, you know, will have different styles managing this game. You know, for Holy Cross, obviously there's a sense of urgency because you want to put this away in two. Nobody ever wants to go to decisive game three, but it's not quite all hands on deck yet. For Bucknell, it certainly is. No need to have a quick hook, especially when Cravero can blow one by and answer back from the three straight hits and get John Paul Bell to go down waving at it. Kiefer Rawlings, the designated hitter, steps up. Still runner in scoring position. <laughs> Waiting on second base is Luke Johnson. And has barely moved off the bag since hitting his double. First pitch to Rawlings takes a healthy cut at it. No contact and it's a first pitch strike. 270 hitter for Rawlings, Fort Ingers, 28 RBI. He's played by far the most games in his career this year. Breaking ball knocks off the bat with a check swing by Rawlings. Won't even need the appeal. The ball doing that for him. He's a 333 hitter with runners in scoring position. You know, first two years, Andy, only played in 12 games combined, hit 238. You know, this year in, in just about 270, the entire season, been very consistent. Quick check back at the runner, being held on by Cam O'Neill, the second baseman, a little bit up and away on the fastball to Rawlings. If your name's Kiefer Rawlings, you gotta be a good baseball player. I mean, <laughs> Rawlings makes baseball gloves for uh, a living. Here's the one, two, he sends this one right back into the protective netting. And Rawlings in game one of the Patriot League tournament was the cleanup batter for Bucknell. Dropped down to the number six spot where he's been now three games since. Johnson and Bell moving up to the four or five spots. Minor changes at the bottom as well. Madigan starting today at second base. Foul ball off to the right side and heads up to the fans in section C. Yeah, Rowling's yesterday made like a Derek Jeter type jump throw, ranging behind the second base bag. It was a low throw, unable to be picked by Rafferty. Official score gave Rafferty an error. It was a tough error. Uh, ended up leading to two runs in the Hassell aforementioned single that you talked about last half inning, and uh, that gave Holy Cross the lead. They never looked back. Here comes the one, two, swing and a miss. Trevero strikes out the side, but in between the strikeouts, two runs come home on Sam Clark's home run. And the Bison leave a runner on second base. Holy Cross will try and get the offense to life and answer back in just a moment on the Patriot League Network on Campus Insiders. David Castellani taking in the game here at Fitton Field today. Father of starting pitcher Mike Castellani. And David Castellani familiar with the Holy Cross campus. Yes, an outstanding golfer for the Holy Cross College Crusaders, class of 1978, an honorable mention All-American. I uh, grew up at just an hour away from Holy Cross. His daughter actually went to Holy Cross too, class of 2013, but Mike 
pledged his allegiance to Lewisburg and the Bucknell Bison. His dad gladly rooting against his alma mater today to support his son, a senior, who will graduate tomorrow with a degree in history. Uh, that's, that's a 10 a.m. start tomorrow. It'll be a quick turnaround for these seniors, but graduation will feel a lot better with two wins under their belt. Go up to graduation at 10 a.m. They're hoping that it will be a little bit less sleep tonight if they're celebrating a victory. Swing and a miss there for O'Neill. It's a 1-1 count to a guy that has really done well in his career against Bucknell. Just two of 12 career games he's played against the Bison without a base hit. And this one will be a soft number over to Sam Clark at third base. He scoops it up. And the ball carries him over towards first base where he makes the throw for the out. And for somebody who's six foot six that plays the hot corner, Sam Clark is very nimble, Andy. Soft feet, good range. Obviously, at the end of the day, you're going to foam at the mouth about his ability to swing the bat. But he can play some solid defense, too. Thomas Russo, lefty, stepping up with one out. First inning, it was a leadoff single for Josh Hissell that got lost in the sun, then a pair of strikeouts in a line drive. Another soft grounder here, foul down the first baseline for Russo. And this is what pitching coaches want, a shutdown inning. You know, you, you get armed with an early lean. You're an upperclassman. You've been through, this is your third Patriot League tournament. Got to put up a zero here for Castellani. Russo now with a 1-1 count after seeing one outside the zone. Trying to get something going here for Holy Cross and answer back. Really not a team that's going to get two down when they get behind by a couple of runs. Uh, yesterday they went down one nothing and kind of had a feeling that the offense wouldn't be down for too long. One run not usually enough to beat Holy Cross, although they have played in a lot of one-run games this year. Yesterday ended up being another one, just not at one nothing. I foul left side, another strike on Russo to make it two and two. Castellani threw 114 pitches last weekend in the complete game three hit shutout against Navy. I would say he could probably throw about 120 to 125 would be his cap. Because you gotta think the next time he would tow the rubber would be in two weeks for the NCAA tournament should Bucknell advance. Hard line drive through the left side. That's a base hit for Russo. The Holy Cross will try and get a couple back-to-back -back you know, hits Daddy, here like, like, like Bucknell had in the bottom of the first inning. Should actually mention early on, just as a reminder, in game two of this series, it is Holy Cross as the away team, despite playing at their home park and wearing the home white jerseys. Bucknell listed as the home team. They'll bat in the bottom half of the inning wearing their road jerseys as the technically visiting team, but listed today as the home team. Is Alex Wojtek stepping up and taking the first pitch for a ball from Castellani. Yeah, Wojtek, his average isn't going to wow you, but he has some pop for a backstop. Five dingers on the year, two of which have come against Bucknell. And all five of his home runs have come in league play. And at the end of the day, that's really what matters most. He's really done great work behind the plate defensively as well. You see that 156 average, not exactly what he would like to see. But he's able to help take opposing runners off the base paths quite a bit. Throw over to first, and once again, Castellani not shy about trying to take a Holy Cross base runner off. Crusaders, a team that will try and take advantage of any runners that they have. May not move them along the base pass with stolen bases, but they can take advantage of any errors that might come their way. Get a couple of back-to-back -back hits. And that's exactly what they did in game one. They took advantage of some unforced errors, some miscues by the, the herd, and they capitalized on it. It's an opportunistic Holy Cross squad. Hard hit, fly ball, left field. Alex Wojtek says goodbye. It's a tie ball game. A two-run home run for the catcher, Alex Wojtek, and Holy Cross has evened it up. We talked about his propensity to do well against the Bucknell Vice in his sixth home run of the year, Andy, three of which have come against Bucknell. He's got the, the faux hawk flowing with the interlocking HC embroidered on the uh, right and left sides. 
and his teammates are fired up for him down the third baseline. Take another look. This just caught too much of the plate, a hanging breaking ball, and Wojtek unloads one, and the ball flies out of here at fit and field, particularly to left field. John Paul Bell runs out of room, and some fans get a souvenir. Tried to hitch a ride onto 290 there. <laughs> it's Kellen McCormick. He takes first pitch strike. Designated hitter for the Crusaders, batting out of the eighth spot. Now working with an even ball game. No runners on following the home run, one out. Somewhat similar to what we had in the bottom half of the first inning. A one out, two run homer. This is the 49th game for Buck now. That was just the 25th home run allowed by the pitching staff all year. By far, fewest in the Patriot League. I mean, Jason Knights, their longtime pitching coach, his number one thing that he wants from his pitchers, keep the ball down. But that was a hanger. And a veteran like Wojtek made the most of it. Ball and two strikes to McCormick, and he protects himself, staying alive with the foul ball. You look at the dimensions of the two ballparks, and, and especially if you're looking at center field, a little bit easier to hit a home run here at Hanover Insurance Park. It's 332 down the left field line, where we've seen a lot of home runs here for Holy Cross. Just 330 at Depew Field in Lewisburg. Off ground to right side, and it skips over the glove of Madigan into right field. And I don't know if that touched his glove, but it definitely took a funny hop there on the grass. It took a funky hop off the lip of the grass. Madigan was expecting that ball to bounce a bit lower. It took a high hop over his black mitt and trickle into shallow right field. Uh, good job by ranging over, but he couldn't smother it. Still would have been a tough play because he would have had to collect it, gather himself without setting his feet. And uh, McCormick runs well but uh, a fortuitous bounce for the Crusaders. That goes down as a single for Kellen McCormick. Time called at the plate by Chris Rinaldi, the number nine hitting shortstop, hitting 243. But back to the dimensions of the ballparks, left center field here at Fitton Field, 357 feet. And this is where it really starts increasing and making it harder for Bucknell to have home runs, whether it be offensively or to give up home runs defensively. 385 to left center field down at Depew Field. And we'll have a conversation on the mound after the first pitch ball issued to Rinaldi. And kind of like we saw with Greg Desenzo in the bottom of the first inning, they'll want to try and come out and have a conversation, settle down the pitcher, Mike Castellani. Those are the first runs Mike Castellani allowed all month. And uh, we're two thirds of the way through the month of May. Here May 20th, you know, Bucknell didn't have uh, any games after the regular season series against Navy. It was their bye week because of final exams. Then he throws that aforementioned complete game shutout. Cruised in the in the uh, bottom of the first inning. And then I think Jason Nice is saying, hey, trust yourself. You've got good stuff. You've thrown three complete game shutouts this year. You're, you're my guy. You're my horse. We need you. Settle down. And the bottom of the order did very well for Holy Cross yesterday. Kellen McCormick, the runner on first base, came over to have a conversation with Greg Desenzo and Chris Rinaldi. Also brought in the on-deck hitter, Josh Hissell, number one on the lineup card for Holy Cross. And there's a strike against Rinaldi, one and one. A pair of two-run home runs in this game have us tied at two through an inning plus. One out in the top of the second here with Holy Cross at the plate. Down and in, a check swing, the field down to first. Tim Detweiler says he did not go, helping out John Epperson, the home plate official. Tim Lombardo out at second, and Buzz Albert at third base. Four-man umpiring crew in the Patriot League tournament. Lefty goes over to first. Always have to be careful with left-handed pitchers on the mound. Those pickoff moves can sometimes look like they're coming to the mound because they just pick up that right foot. And it's just a matter of where it goes. And it looks like maybe something on the field down the left field line. There's some light stirring in the Holy Cross bullpen deep down the left field line. And maybe a ball just skipped away. It looks like that's Cravero warming up. And this inning hasn't been that long to... Uh, continue to pitch 
unless he's just a creature of habit that he just wants to stay loose like that. And usually if your team bats around, maybe you'll go out to the pin, stay loose. But this is just the fifth batter of the inning. And sometimes you'll see that happen, especially in college where the, the bullpen is pretty close to the playing field. In this case, maybe a little bit further away than some other fields, but all the way down the left field line. Prevero just wanting to stay loose. A little help from his offense on the two-run home run by Alex Wojtek. Another throw over. Hey, we can look at the full pitch counts for Castellani, but that doesn't include throws over to first, which has probably been a third of what he's thrown today. Yeah, very preoccupied with the runners, but he's got a great receiver and battery mate in Evan Klugerman who's thrown out a league-high 15 runners trying to swipe bags this year. This pitch will come to the plate. Breaking ball on the outside corner and the delayed strike three call it expires Chris Rinaldi's time at the plate. Backwards K brings up the top of the order. Josh Hissell, who led off the game with a high fly ball single. Fell in for a base hit. With Luke Johnson, the shortstop, battling the sun, dropped down a little bit too far in front of the left field to John Paul Bell. Still waiting at first is McCormick after the ground ball single to right field that skipped over Madigan's glove. There's a look at that strike. I guess it hit the black part of the plate in the outside corner. That strike three to Rinaldi. Third strike out of the game for Castellani. Vassell swings and misses. Nothing in one. McCormick has tried three stolen bases this year. However, has not safely gotten to second on any of them. Two outs here, top of the second inning. The 0-1 on the way. Line drive, right field, dies in front of Scales. And being held at second base is Kellen McCormick. Pretty smart as Scales got that in quickly. Good crow hop from Chucky Scales, fired to the cutoff, man. Johnson stared back. McCormick, who took a hard turn around second base, taking a look, just not trying to do too much right here. Just flicked this one opposite field into right field, sat back on it, kept his hands uh, back, drove it to right field, and Scales came up firing, cut off by Johnson. Cassell yesterday with a couple of RBIs on a big hit. Today, two hits through the first two innings. Here's Bill Schlick coming up with runners on first and second, two down, hard grounder. This will bounce up to Luke Johnson, and he goes the short route to second base, taking out his cell. Holy Cross does score two, thanks to the big ball by Alex Wojtek. Even ball game, two runs apiece between the Crusaders and the Bison with Bucknell coming up next. After a two-run home run from Sam Clark in the bottom of the first inning, Holy Cross answers back in the top of the second, and it wasn't any of these guys, well, Sam Clark did it in the first, but Anthony Critelli, you see, for Holy Cross, all-league first team. Sam Clark on there as well for Bucknell. Brett Smith, the center fielder. A lot of talent here between these two teams playing in the Patriot League Championship Series. See a lot of Navy in there as well, but they could not make it thanks to the Bucknell Bison sweeping the first two games last week. Oh, just a loaded te teams, tons of talent in this league. I mean, think about it, the last week of the regular season, Bucknell could have been the regular season champs. They could have been out of the tournament. Same for Holy Cross. Evan Klugerman thought about bunting on the first pitch from Corvero, who threw 25 pitches in the first inning. Really had to work quite a bit. Thanks to the two-run home run by Clark, and then a double from Luke Johnson to follow. Did get three strikeouts for all three outs in the first frame. Klugerman's really heating up as the weather's getting hotter. Seven hits in three Patriot League tournament games thus far for the six foot three backstop for the Bison. 2-0 from Crevero. Line drive over a leaping O'Neill into right field, and that'll be scooped up by his cell. Big turnaround first, but Klugerman you know, scamper back to the bag as the throw goes to second. So he's on with a leadoff single. Uh, Klugerman plays the game so hard. I mean, look at his aggressive running right out of the box. I mean, he's thinking double, and he's a catcher. And that ball doesn't even go near the warning track at all. He almost was able to go to second after that bobble out and right. But the leadoff man's aboard for the Bison. 
comes Evan Madigan making his way into the starting lineup today. And first pitch drops down for a bunt. Tossed over from Critelli to the covering O'Neill to get the out on the sacrifice. And Klugerman is on second base. A nice job by Evan Madigan. It almost looked like he was bunting for a base hit right there, the way he pushed that one up the first base line. But a real solid job by Cam O'Neill. He got a late start, but was able to cover in time for the sacrifice put out. And the Bison have the go ahead run in scoring position. Chucky Scales has really gotten himself a pretty regular spot in the starting lineup this season for Scott Heather and the Bucknell Bison. Breaking ball stays high to him, and he's ahead 1 0. He drove in a run in the ninth inning yesterday to help mount a rally. As you mentioned, primarily a pinch runner the last two years. Was seven for eight in stolen bases. Runner on base this time. Klugerman will stay on second base as the pitch gets away from the catcher, Wojtek. Actually took a lucky Holy Cross bounce because the ball bounced near the third base line, which was closer to the third base bag, which is where Evan Klugerman wanted to go. Took a hard secondary lead, but wisely pumped the brakes at second. Would have been a pretty short throw for Wojtek. He got to it pretty quickly as well. Check swing, but a pitch right down the pipe on scales. Two and one. And I think this championship series features two of the best catchers in the Patriot League. Got to throw in John Rosef as well from Army. And that guy is just an Iron Man behind the plate. First team all league guy. But I love the way Wojtek knocks down balls, calls a game. Uh, same for Klugerman too. Up high, he's able to receive that one, not let it get by. And we talked about his offense and how that struggled, of course, right before he hit a two-run home <laughs> run, but really has been most productive as a catcher defensively for the Holy Cross Crusaders. 3-1 pitch on the way to Scales. Popped up high in the air, might stay in play right in front of the Crusader dugout and just sneaks by the glove of Thomas Russo coming in from third base. I think he was a little bit shy of the fence there. Saw his teammates scrambling out of the way. Might have distracted him out of the corner of his eye. Yeah, Holy Cross, a fundamentally sound team. Second fewest errors in the Patriot League. I mean, that's a ball that just has to be caught. You're playing in your home park. I know you're the designated road team, but you know the dimensions here. You should know how much space you have. You work on those kind of pop-ups and communication during, uh, you know, uh, practice every day. We'll see if it comes back and looms large. Payoff pitch. Hard line drive into the stands. I've noticed that's when Chucky Scales is doing his best. Like he, he knows his body. He's not a home run hitter, but he's the guy who's just going to kind of serve the ball the other way, kind of through that Tony Gwynn hole, that 6-5 hole uh, between short and third. That's when Chucky's at his best. A compact swing, particularly with two strikes. Payoff pitch again, this time grounded over to short for Rinaldi. Makes the throw on to first and beats a hustling Chucky Scales, but a productive out nonetheless as he moves Evan Klugerman up to 90 feet away from home plate. He represents the go-ahead run with the top of the order coming up in Brett Smith. Five strikeouts the last two games for Brett Smith as you take a look at this good play by Evan Klugerman running on contact. I think that's a smart play by Holy Cross shortstop uh, Chris Rinaldi. Just get the sure out at first. He, maybe he could have gotten Klugerman at third. But first pitch. You don't want to make the inning go any longer. First pitch ball to Brett Smith here. He struck out in the first inning. One of the three strikeouts Joe Cravero had. No case here in the second. A sacrifice bunt and a ground out to short. Following the leadoff single by Klugerman, who now stands on third. 1-0. A lazy swing and miss there for Smith. He's just way out in front. I wonder if he needs to move up in the batter's box a little bit. Use his legs a little bit more. Four strikeouts yesterday before the big double late in the game to keep Bucknell in it. Wasn't quite enough as the breaking ball finds the zone one and two. Not exactly an easy man to strike out. Has fan 33 times today. College baseball insider called him one of the best pure hitters in the Patriot League in their preseason report. 
Up high for a ball from Crevero. Bucknell's all-time hits leader. Actually broke that record right here in the regular season against Holy Cross. Here at Fitton Field. Four games in that series, three of them went Holy Cross's way. Swing and a miss, another K for Crevero, and it comes against the leadoff man, Brett Smith. So the Crusaders are able to strand a Bison runner on third base and get through the second inning, still even at two. To the third we go at Fitton Field. Four straight champions the last four years in a six-team Patriot League Holy Cross today trying to make it five straight champions in five straight years. Yeah, a lot of parity in this Patriot League. Army won it in 2013, Bucknell in 2014, Lehigh in 2015, Navy in 2016, and Holy Cross is one win away from winning their first ever Patriot League tournament title. As you mentioned, Andy, could be the fifth different team to win the Patriot League tournament title in the last five years. That speaks to the parity of this prestigious league. And there's only six teams in the Patriot League. <laughs> so Maybe. that means Lafayette might be in the on-deck circle. Maybe with a couple of one-run wins over Holy Cross last year in the championship series. Austin Mazel leading off the third inning for the Crusaders. This is the top of the third. Holy Cross, the road team in this game two this series. Breaking ball falls in. Mazel had turned away from that. Started out looking like it might hit him in the elbow. Mazel, one of three Holy Cross student athletes that has started every single game this season. He's only a freshman. Drops at it, hits it foul. Not having the best of tournaments so far. Last three games, he's still looking for his first hit in 10 at bats. So a 303 batting average to lead the team. Patriot League Rookie of the Year, just the fourth ever in Holy Cross history, the last to win it. Cam O'Neill, the junior second baseman. He's done very well in his career against Bucknell. Mazel swings and misses, strike three. And that is the fourth strike out of the afternoon for Mike Castellani. No, that yeah, Castellani doing a really good job here, Andy. He's thrown 44 pitches, and 33 of them have been for strikes. So 75% of his pitches, he's counted the zone. Uh, and that's exactly what you want if you're a defense, too, because you know the guy is going to work quickly, throw strikes, and it's easy to play behind. Strike called on Anthony Critelli, who steps up. Consistent player, three straight years for Holy Cross on the first team all Patriot League. Clean up batter. Lined out to second base to end the first inning. And just one out here in the third as he steps up. Now the 1 1 count. Five hits on the board for Holy Cross, four for Bucknell. Both teams clean defensively so far. Down low on Critelli to get him ahead in the count. Critelli and Castellani, they've probably seen each other so much over the last four years. Castellani played his summer ball in the Coastal Plain League. Critelli played in the prestigious Cape Cod League. Appeal down to first. Tim Detweiler says he did not go. And maybe Critelli is a student athlete that could be drafted. There are 40 rounds in the baseball draft. It'll be on June 12th, 13th, and 14th. Maybe he'll have his name called. He's got the size. It's 6'4", 225, Andy. Little bit outside. Good attempt to frame it by Evan Klugerman, but Critelli is on with a walk. Now the second baseman. Brings up Cam O'Neill, who again has been fantastic in his career against Bucknell. 15 for 48 entering the day. Did ground out in his first time up. But hits in all but two of his 12, game, 12 games against the Bison before this afternoon. First pitch called in there for a strike on O'Neill. Has really enjoyed himself in his career against Bucknell. And he's still got a year left. He's a former rookie of the year in the Patriot League two seasons ago. A little bit of a check, definitely held up. Ball missed, it was pretty close though. 
I guess the only thing that kept Cam O'Neill from being on the All-League team was his batting average because he leads the team at home runs at 9, RBI 41. Had that emphatic three-run home run to jumpstart the semifinal party last weekend that you were at, Andy. He's been clutch. Swinging strike there. That nine home runs is one away from tying the program's single-season record. Has at least a little bit more baseball left in him. Holy Cross doesn't win this game. He'll have another nine innings to try and give it a go this afternoon. And if Holy Cross wins either game, it'll be on to the NCAA tournament for the first time since 1978. Check swing, appealed down. That time they say he did go. It was dropped by Klugerman, so after the appeal, he picks it up and slaps a tag on O'Neill to finish the strikeout. No contact inning, a strikeout walk and a strikeout. As Thomas Russo made contact his first time up, single to left, and then scored on Wojtek's home run. Lefty hitter coming up. Second teamer in the Patriot League this year. About half of his spots, or his starts this season, have come out of the seventh spot in the order. In the Patriot League tournament, he's batting sixth all four games. Has hit in quite a bit of the tournament as the pitch gets away from Klugerman, allowing the runner to easily advance down to second, bounce back to the backstop. Just spiked the breaking ball in the dirt. Klugerman could not get his chest protector under, tried to pick it with his mitt. Couldn't get his glove up in time. That's a wild pitch, and it puts the go-ahead run in scoring position for a timely hitter. Like you mentioned, all-league selection to Russo. There are two outs in the frame, both strikeouts. Five on the afternoon for Mike Castellani so far. And not a big-time strikeout guy as Russo swings. And strike one on him. Maybe an unnecessary dive back to the bag for Critelli. Yesterday, Holy Cross scored three of their four runs with two outs. That's what Patriot League Tournament Baseball is all about, that two-out hitting. Here's the 2-1. Well inside. Russo turned his body but didn't move his feet. I'm sure he wouldn't mind taking a hit by a pitch here if it gets him on, gets him on base. If it's in the batter's box, not a whole lot that Bucknell can say about it. 3-1 on the way. Swing and miss. Full count. It shows you the kind of feel that Castellani has for his breaking ball. On a, on a fastball count, he just threw a breaking ball on a hot day like this. So he's really feeling a secondary pitch. Not as hot as the last couple of days, though. In fact, about 30 degrees cooler than it was here in the area on Thursday up in the mid-90s. Breaking ball high in the air. Right field going back is Scales at the edge of the warning track. Makes the catch, and that ends the inning. Russo put a charge into it, but not quite enough to clear the fence. And Holy Cross and Bucknell still square at two. One runner left on base as we go to the bottom of the third on the Patriot League Network on Campus Insiders. Taking a look out at 290 and Rotman's furniture. A couple of balls in this tournament have been shot out that way. But Danny Rafferty stepping up to lead off the bottom half of the third inning. He's been a pretty good Patriot League tournament player in his career, 0 for 4 yesterday, but before that had been 14 for 33 in tournament action throughout his four years at Bucknell, though didn't make it as a sophomore. League champions his freshman year, made it into the tournament, but lost in the semis last year. Bucknell went to Charlottesville, Virginia, their freshman year for the NCAA Tournament Regional. Here comes the first pitch from Joe Cravero in the zone for a strike. He's got four strikeouts this afternoon. Three in the first inning and then finished off the second with a K to Brett Smith. Lefty Rafferty, one of two straight lefties here with Sam Clark coming up next. It was these two batters that got Bucknell on the board. Rafferty with a single in the first inning and then Sam Clark followed it up with a Big shot out to right field. Yesterday it was out to left center with the home run. Today into the end zone over in the football stadium. Ball 
on the strike to Rafferty. Looks a little bit outside, but called for a strike. Two balls and two strikes. And yeah, Rafferty turned in disgust against home plate umpire John Epperson. Didn't like that call, but has to regroup quickly. Rafferty has shown the ability to finish off seasons pretty well. Last year, 8 for 18 in his final four games, trying to have a big day here and close out his season. Well, really keep it going, but hitting well towards the end of the season. This time, he flies out to left field, though. As a freshman, he'd finished off pretty well as well. 10 for 25 in his last nine games. As we take another look at that fly out to left. Hit it pretty well. Just got under it a little bit. And listen, Sam Clark here coming up. Had the double yesterday. First pitch strike there. Had the home run earlier today. First two runs of the ball game back in the bottom of the first inning, and then Alex Wojtek answered back for Holy Cross. That's where we stand now, still even at two. Nothing in two, though, on Clark with one down in the bottom of the third. The size is just eye-popping with Sam Clark. I mean, doesn't the bat look like a toothpick in his hands, that six-foot-six six frame? Rivero misses off the plate a little bit. It's one and two. Clark 6'5", six, six, uh, six, 220 from Tribuco Canyon, California. Two for four, a double and a home run yesterday. Three for three with a run and two ribbies last week in game two. Home run already today. Waiting on the one two from Crevero. Crevero had stepped off for a moment, time called, and now he's back on the rubber. Sharp grounder foul, a little bit late on the swing. Looks like he wasn't completely committed to it. And I think that's the biggest difference between Sam Clark, his junior and senior years, and his freshman and sophomore years. He was trying to pull everything his first two years here with the Bucknell Bison. And through hard work and maturity and learning the game, studying pitches, taking more reps, he's learned to be a complete player. And we saw him go opposite field to left center for a uh, home run yesterday. He had a booming double as well that way. Using the whole field today, of course, the home run was – just absolutely mashed over the Papa Gino's sign in right <laughs> field. He's going to take what the pitcher gives him. 2-2 Two -two from Crevero. High fly. This is right along the line. Left side and over is Bill Schlick. Just in fair territory to make the catch. So the two runners who scored in the first have both flown out to Bill Schlick in left field here in the third. That brings up Luke, J Luke Johnson, who followed that home run with a double. Sam Clark just a bit out in front. Ball had enough hang time for Schlick to range over near the foul line and secure it. And here's Johnson. He was left on second base with a couple of strikeouts to Bell and Rawlings back in the first. Gets a hold of this one, left side. Schlick going back, though, and he is able to make the catch. A busy man in the third inning is Bill Schlick, making all three outs to get Bucknell 1-2-3 for the first time today. And Holy Cross will come back up. We're a third of the way through this one as Holy Cross and Bucknell even at two in the potentially final game of the Patriot League Championship Series. Starting out the fourth inning here at Hanover Insurance Park at Fitton Field. And for the middle third of the game, I'll hand over the play-by-play -play to Justin Antwell. Thanks a lot, Andy. Flash back to the second inning. Holy Cross down 2-0. Not for more. They tie the game on a booming two-run home run by backstop Alex Wojtek. Just his sixth home run of the season, three of which have come against the Bucknell Bison. Great to be alongside Andy Town. I'm Justin Antwell, top of the fourth inning, game two of a best-of-three series between the 
two seed Holy Cross and the four seed Bucknell. Holy Cross won yesterday by a final of four to three. Crusaders eyeballing their first ever Patriot League tournament title in the 24 years of this tournament's existence. Quickly 0-2 count to Wojtek. Mike Castellani sitting in an even 60 pitches, 41 of which have been four strikes. Castellani picked up the win against Holy Cross in the regular season with a quality start. But other than that bump in the road to Wojtek, he's been solid today. Waste pitch down and in. Count one and two. Castellani has struck out five, four of which have been swings. So that tells you his stuff has been pinpoint. He operates from the stretch, even with nobody on, because he was a relief pitcher his first two years. The one, two. Breaking ball. Did he hold up? Yes, he did. This is the first base umpire, Tim Detweiler. Count two and two to Wojtek. Castellani was able to see what Connor Van Hoos did yesterday. All season long, it's been kind of a competition between the two to see who can put together the best start of the weekend. The 2-2, two -two, it's pounded to center field. Smith was playing Wojtek deep, no one has popped. And he'll make the catch at the edge of the, edge of the track. There's one down here in the top of the fourth inning. Castellani really needed to make an even better start than Van Hoos yesterday. Not that Connor Van Hoos was really bad yesterday, just kind of took a little bit of tough luck with a couple on earned runs. Digging in the six foot three DH, Kellen McCormick, sophomore from Rockford, Illinois, an economics major. First time up, he's single. And according to Coach Desenzo, he's one of the most improved players in the team this year. One of the few upperclassmen that sees a lot of playing time. This is a grizzled veteran Holy Cross squad that boasts 13 seniors. Numbered in the third baseline foul count one and one and it's not the elephant in the room. I mean these student athletes and coaches are hungry based on what happened last year. It's kind of fueled them the last 12 months and it's time for them to, to make amends and, and flip that script. A couple of one run losses in the Patriot League Championship Series to Navy this time especially getting a chance to host the final series. Really want to close it out with a win. These 13 seniors have improved on the previous year's results. The 1-1 one, one changeup befuddles McCormick. Count one and two. Didn't make it to the tournament as freshman. They made it to the semifinals as sophomores. Lost in the championship last year. And really, there's only one thing <laughs> left. <laughs> well, they got two cracks at it today as they're sitting in the driver's seat thanks to yesterday's come-from-behind win. The six foot four southpaw on the bump. Ahead in the count. And a wave and a foul tip. Just grazing a piece to stay alive, McCormick. Count remains one and two as Castellani in search of his sixth strikeout. Fifth championship series ap appearance in the last eight years for Holy Cross. Trying to finally break through and get the trophy for the first time. One, two from Castellani. High count two and two. Castellani 10th all time in Bucknell ERA at career 3.82 mark. That's minimum 100 innings pitched. They're already doing construction over at the Hart Center, so might as well just carve out a little bit of room for a potential Patriot League trophy as well. Got the hammers and nails already out. The 2-2. Two -two. Curveball dots the outside corner, down looking, buckling the knees of uh, McCormick for Castellani. Sixth strike out of the game, just second looking, two away. He's retired four straight. And Castellani last week tied his season high six strikeouts. He's already there with two outs in the fourth inning this afternoon. Pretty solid day on the mound. You just take out that two-run home run by Alex Wojtek. Breaking ball low and in, count 1-0. and oh. To Rinaldi, who picked up two big-time hits yesterday as a nine-hole hitter in the 4-3 victory. Just a freshman from Westfield, New Jersey. His father was a great baseball player at Manhattan. Pitch pounded in for a called strike. 
Had a 17-game on base streak earlier this year, so shows you his kind of potential as a freshman to be that consistent. The 1-1. One, one. Beautiful curveball, just dropping it in perfectly for a strike. Count one and two. And that long on base streak, really, especially out of the number eight, number nine spots in the lineup where he's been all season long, kind of a second leadoff hitter for Holy Cross. Curveball just outside, two and two. Getting on base a third of the time this year. Has scored 24 runs. Castellani struck out two in the first, one in the second, two in the third. Already one here in the fourth. Looking for his seventh. The 2-2 from the Savvy Senior. Crank down the left field line, hustling into the corner. It's John Paul Bell. This will be extra bases. Chris Rinaldi picks up his third hit of the weekend. The nine hitter has been swinging the aluminum bat well. And the go-ahead runs in scoring position as the lineup flips over for the catalyst, Josh Hassell, John Hassell. His fifth double of the season, Chris Rinaldi coming up and getting himself on base. And we talked about earlier, a lot of the runs, or in fact, all the runs yesterday coming with two outs for Holy Cross. It's the two out double. Rinaldi getting himself on with a pretty dangerous part of the order coming up right at the top. Hassell, a 342 hitter with runners in scoring position, already two for two against Castellani this afternoon. Has picked up two of the six hits for the purple and white. Low and in, one and oh. Maybe this is when you want to pitch around Hassell, knowing that he's had your number here, Andy, and on deck. It's Schlitt, still a very quality hitter, but he is 0 for two today. He hasn't gotten himself on yet. Hit into a fielder's choice that ended the second inning after striking out in the first, but Hassell has been swinging the bat pretty well. Breaking ball away, count 2-0. Oh. This could be one of the proverbial unintentional, intentional walks. And now Klugerman will have some words here with Castellani. Maybe want to go through the secondary signs, make sure Rinaldi's not relaying anything. Including today, Hassell in this tournament is 7 for 15 with five runs batted in in the Patriot League tournament. And here's another reason why Hassell's had some success. He hits 480 against lefties this season, just 234 against righties. And he's two for two off the southpaw Castellani this afternoon. He's very patient, too, leads the team in walks with 20. That's why he's the leadoff hitter. He does have some power, though, too. He had nine home runs last year. The 2-0, breaking ball away, count 3-0. and I just don't think Castellani's going to give him anything to hit. There you see pitching coach Jason Knights, who calls the pitches in the Bucknell dugout on the first baseline. I have to imagine he'll be laying off this one. Hassell will be. It's the 3-0 from Castellani. Curveball drops in for a strike. There's the trust with the secondary pitch again. That looked like a pretty similar pitch to the third ball called on Hassell especially given the situation, really no reason to try swinging at it with a green light. Two outs, tied at two in the fourth. The 3-1 to a man who armed Holy Cross with the lead yesterday, and he's might arm it with the lead again. Rounding third and heading for home, it's Rinaldi. The throw from Chucky Scales will be cut off by Rafferty. Another clutch, two out, RBI knock for John Hassell, his third RBI of this championship series. And Holy Cross grabs a 3-2 lead here in the fourth. Hassell, three for three today, and he has been fantastic, just swinging the bat very well. Hasn't been really even lucky hits. Maybe the first one was the pop-up that the fielders had to deal with the sun, but you just see him turn on that one, and his eighth hit and sixth RBI of this year's Patriot League tournament. I think it was just Castellani getting predictable with his breaking ball. I mean, he was throwing it on 2-0 counts, 3-0 counts, 3-1 count right there, and just was up in the zone, able to, able to be flicked in the right field. This ball's grounded to Clark, off the edge of his glove, stays with it, muscles it across the diamond, good stretch by Rafferty to retire Schlitt 
left in the frame, but the Crusaders mount a two-out rally, a double by the nine-hole hitter Rinaldi, and then in a go-ahead RBI single by Hassell. Through three and a half from Fit and Field, it's 3-2 Holy Cross on the Patriot League Network. Holy Cross is down 2 nothing, but that mentally tough purple-white dugout has stormed in front to grab a 3-2 lead. The hero of this weekend, the front runner for Patriot League Tournament MVP, uh, Andy might very well be Josh Hassell. A three for three today, had the go-ahead RBI in the top half of this fourth inning. He has been fantastic all tournament long. Again, eight hits in 16 at-bats, now six ribbies between the semifinals and now this championship series against Bucknell. He's one of 13 seniors in the squad, as is Joe Crivero, who's armed with his first lead of the afternoon. The six foot one right-hander from Hanover, New Hampshire, an economics major. Was on the Patriot League all academic team, boasting a 3.39 GPA. First pitch to the freshman who plays like an upperclassman, John Paul Bell is outside, count one and oh. John Paul Bell struck out swinging his first time up, one of four strikeout victims for the aforementioned Crivero. Switch hitter, bats from the left side. Fastball away, count two and oh. Who's do you think about taking a strike here? I'd probably, especially at the beginning of the inning when the first two pitches are balls. At times when it gets to a three ball count, you wait till a pitcher throws a strike. Oh, he's swinging for it and bounces it up the middle. Backhanded stop, throw to first, not in time. Legging out an infield single. It's John Paul Bell. First off, tip your cap to second baseman Cam O'Neill. Just to be able to smother that ball and get to that ball was quite impressive. Yeah, it was a close play down there at first base. At least had a chance. Anthony Critelli stretching out, trying to make the play and get the ball into the glove a little bit quicker. But and that ball looked like it has had eyes for center field. And... It was a bang-bang play at first, but I think the umpire, Tim Detweiler, got the call right that the runner bell was safe. Kiefer Rawlings does not have a sacrifice bunt this year. I would presume he'd be swinging away and doesn't even square around. He takes a fastball above the letters high. Count 1-0. and oh. The DH that started out the tournament in the cleanup spot dropped down to the number six hole. Still a, a spot where you expect a lot of production. Glances over to check on John Paul Bell. Rawlings has been very impressive. Father played football at Towson. Mother was a standout field hockey player at Towson as well. He, like Rivero, on the Patriot League all-academic team. An accounting and financial management major. The 1-0. Screaming line drive into the bleachers down the third baseline foul. Looks like everybody's okay. Watch out down there. And Rawlings missed a decent amount of time towards the end of last year with an injury. Didn't play after April 6th, had just five total appearances. And his career entering this year had seven starts in 12 games, but has started 45 of his, 27, of his 47 appearances this season. The 1-1. Way high, change up flutters, way out of the zone. Count to one, and I think the biggest difference with Rowlings this year, juxtaposed to his first two years, health, and he's hit the weight room. I mean, his body is totally changed from when he strolled on the campus three years ago in Lewisburg. He credits Cody Miller, the strength and conditioning coach at Bucknell, for his massive strides. Reaches for one, lazy fly ball to left. Should be corralled by Schlitt. And it is. There's one away. Four straight outs recorded by Bill Schlick in left field. A busy man out there. Hasn't done a whole lot at the plate, so might as well do it with the glove out on the field. Here's Evan Klugerman. He's been the hottest hitter for the Bucknell Bison. He's just been outstanding. He is 8 for 13 this Patriot League tournament. Had a sharp single in the right center field alley, almost stretched into a double with his hustle out of the box. His first time up. And we were talking to Coach Heather in a conference call earlier this week, and we said, how'd you find Evan Klugerman? He's from Weston, Florida. Bucknell's in central Pennsylvania. And he said he was at a, a summer showcase camp in the Sunshine State, 
Evan happened to be there. He was actually, Coach Heather was actually sitting right next to Coach Desenzo at that camp. And he laid eyes on Klugerman, loved what he saw, but he was a bit apprehensive. He was worried, how was he going to get him to Lewisburg? It's a hit and run, swing and a miss. And throw down to second, John Paul Bell easily gunned down by Wojtek, who already has a two-run home run in this game, showing off his strong arm. He's been great throwing out runners this season. That is, in fact, the 49th of his career, which is the most for Holy Cross. In fact, he was tied for first in runner scots, dealing entering this season with 33, but now 16 on the year. And it's always dangerous to run against Alex Wojtek. Quickly, two outs, and now it's an 0-2 count. So just when you thought Bucknell was going to have something brewing, leadoff infield single, a fly ball, then a caught stealing on the missed hit and run attempt. But just to put a bow in that Klugerman story, uh, Klugerman, he wanted to go to Bucknell. He doesn't really like the hot weather too much in South Florida, and he just wanted to experience some seasons in Central Florida. Plus, the degree from Bucknell will speak volumes after his playing days are over with. Wants to be a general manager. Wonder if he's reconsidered that weather decision at all. <laughs> well, the good news for all these teams in the Patriot League, most of them don't have too many home games because of the weather, like you mentioned there, Andy. They do take a trip to, to South Florida uh, during spring break. 2-2 two -two here to Klugerman. Looking for his ninth hit in four games in this tournament. Unbelievable. Fouled into the netting behind home plate. We'll do it again. Even some of those trips down to Florida, you'll play other northern teams like Bucknell this year played against Marist. They played against Hartford, against Northeastern, Harvard, UMass, even Penn State, all down in Florida. Right, you're playing like 10 games in seven days. It's uh, it's exhausting down there. It's nonstop baseball. It's not really spring break, so to speak. <laughs> it's 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 heavy duty work. And. Uh, Bucknell did okay, but at the end of the day, Bucknell's not really built for success just because they don't really have the depth uh, to do well at those you know, week-long tournaments. They are built for a short series. Same with Holy Cross. Payoff pitch. Dots the outside corner. Klugerman down low. And he wants to argue, but can't argue too much because you want your pitchers to get those borderline calls as well. Good shut that inning from the senior Cavero. Through four from Hanover Insurance Park at Fitton Field, it's 3-2 Holy Cross on the Patriot League Network. 3-2 Holy Cross leads Bucknell as we're set to begin the top of the fifth inning here at Hanover Insurance Park at Fitton Field. Evan Klugerman struck out looking to end last half inning. A borderline 50-50 pitch may have been outside, but it's always a precarious position for a catcher. You want to argue, but then if you argue too much, you've got the home plate umpire breathing down your back when you're on defense, Andy. Yeah, good frame by Wojtek there as well. Didn't really move the glove all that much. Probably helped him get the strike call for his pitcher, Joe Crivero. And Crivero's been pretty solid with the strikeouts today. He's got five. A little bit more of a strikeout pitcher than Castellani, but both pitchers with a pretty good handful of Ks today. The 81st pitch fired by Mike Castellani, the senior southpaw, is laid in for a called strike. Count 0 and 1. Teeth of the Holy Cross order do up. Mazel Critelli and O'Neill, the rookie of the year, pounds one into the Bison dugout. Count balloons to 0 and 2. A couple of strikeouts in today's game. Two of the six that Castellani has recorded. Still looking his, for his first hit of the Patriot League tournament. Nothing doing last weekend or yesterday. The 0-2 blew it by him. Strike three. Swung on and missed. Seven Ks for Mike Castellani through four and a third innings. This will bring up Anthony Critelli. One of the best ever done. The purple and white uniform. And an interesting tidbit that we learned from Coach Heather earlier in the week is that Anthony Critelli went to a Bucknell baseball camp one summer when he was in high school. He was heavily recruited by the Bucknell Bison. And at the end of the day, all the coaches in the Patriot League are pretty much recruiting from the same pool of talent. Because the most important factor is, can, not only can you play baseball, can you be a high academic kid? Because all these schools in the Patriot League are top notch in the classroom. And looking at similar athletic level, looking at similar academic level. The 0-1. Fratelli shoots this one to deep center field. Smith at the warning track, leaping, gone! 
24th career home run for Anthony Critelli. Tied for the program record. That's over a 385 foot shot to dead center. He's fired up. Holy Cross leads 4-2 in the fifth. This team plays with a lot of emotion. We've seen it after just about every big play that they have made in this tournament really all season long. I mean, we've seen after the catch to end the game yesterday. We've seen after George Capen so many times last weekend. So a bunch of other instances, you know, runs coming across, home runs, everybody coming out of the dugout. And Holy Cross, just everybody there for each other. They don't care how they do it. They just want to win ball games. And we, when you get a big play and a big home run like that, you might as well celebrate. Three-time first-team All-League selection for a reason for Anthony Critelli. Homered in the semifinals. Now has homered in the championship series. Holy Cross nursing a 4-2 lead. Top five, one out, nobody on for Cam O'Neill. Such great balance this Holy Cross lineup that Coach DeCenzo has put together in his 10th year at the helm for the Crusaders. And not necessarily left-right balance. They only have two lefties in the order, but in terms of guys who can hit for power and hit for average, they got a handful of guys that can do both by themselves. A little bouncer to third. Glove by Clark. There's two away. So the home run ball has plagued the Bison in this one. This is a pitching staff that does not surrender the big fly. When you look at Anthony Cortelli as one of those examples of just a, a great pure hitter. 289 average coming into the day, 493 slugging that led the team. 10 doubles, now eight home runs with that one. Thomas Russo swung on and missed. Count 0 and 1. Russo a junior from Weston, Massachusetts, political science major. Second team all league selection. Another one of the more improved players in the Patriot League. He's hit safely in now eight of his last nine games with a knock today. The 0-2, swung on and missed, strike three. Klugerman gets an angle, but he air mills the throw high. It skipped away from the cerebral backstop, but in square his shoulders, and the throw sailed high. The 5'11", Danny Rafferty, take another look. That's one of those errors that Holy Cross will just be eager to take advantage of. The swinging third strike drop by the catcher. Would have had the throw there in time, and it didn't even look like Russo was really sprinting down the line. That ball didn't get that far away from Klugerman, but just sailed the throw high and a little bit off the bag that pulled Rafferty away. So officially a strikeout and an E2 allows the inning to extend. Count 0-1 to Wojtek, who crushed a two-run home run his first time up. And you look at Alex Wojtek here, Andy, and you flash back to yesterday. There was a huge two-out air. It led to two runs for the Crusaders, and they're hoping for the same thing on this occasion. There's the breaking ball that befuddles Wojtek. Tried Down to go with the Adrian Beltre <laughs> one-knee home run. Yeah, a violent hack. Hardy's got a long ball today. He was reaching a little bit for that one. 0-2 here for Castellani. They throw over to check on Russo at first base. Wojtek has a real wide stance. One foot at the top of the batter's box, the other foot at the bat back of the batter's box. Breaking ball, ooh, just missed. Castellani insinuating he thought that was strike three. Took a few steps off the hill. Wojtek this season, you look at his batting average coming into the day, 156. It doesn't really you know, get anybody woken up, but slugging 303 is a pretty good number on a batting average that low. Looks like there's some stirring in the Bucknell bullpen. As Castellani 
is inching closer to that 100 pitch plateau. And they have the runner picked off. Throw over to first, Russo in a rundown, and he just kind of concedes the whole play. And that'll be a nice pickoff move for Castellani to end the threat. But a booming home run by Anthony Critelli. His 24th career long ball for the senior makes this a 4-2 score through four and a half innings of play on the Patriot League Network. Greg Desenzo trying to lead Holy Cross in the NCAA tournament for the first time since 1978. That was when gas was just 63 cents a gallon. Two-time Patriot League Coach of the Year. As for Scott Heather, his team's behind the eight ball. Lost yesterday 4-3, down 4-2 as we start the bottom of the fifth inning. Coach Heather in his 13th year in Lewisburg, the 2014 Patriot League Coach of the Year. He was a great pitcher in the late 90s. The Arkansas Razorbacks out in the SEC, and he's built a really nice program in Central Pennsylvania. He's been part of the program each of the two years. They've won the Patriot League Championship as a four seed. One of those years was in 2010 here at Fit and Field against the number three Holy Cross Crusaders. Evan Madigan has just 10 hits all year, but four of them came in the regular season against Holy Cross last month. The freshman second baseman from New Jersey fouls one in the inning behind home plate, count 0-1. Comes from Red Bank Catholic High School. Madigan serves this one in the left center field, hangs up long enough to be caught by Mazel, and there's one away. Nice easy can of corn out there in center field for Mazel. Try and keep Joe Crivero from throwing too many pitches in each inning. Get him as long as necessary, although of course everybody available today for Holy Cross. Fouled on the first baseline, and you know, Crivero has settled down nicely. You know, he allowed three hits in the first inning, but since then he's only yielded two. And we're one out deep in the bottom of the fifth inning, more than halfway through this contest. Holy Cross leading, doubling up Bucknell four to two. Have to imagine everybody on the pitching staff could throw, possibly even Brendan King if it really <laughs> gets that far. I talked to him after the game for the post-game interview. He said, you know, we'll see. I, I'm not going to close the door on that thought. Obviously, I don't think you would ever see him in game number two here, uh, but possibly game three, maybe for an inning, maybe. If it's a win or go home right. or if it's a do something or go home situation. Knowing his competitive juices, he'll want to be on that bump. The 0-2 to Scales. Chucky Scales the third. Fastball up and away, count one and two. Comes from a very athletic family. Both his father and grandfather played in the National Football League. And his father was drafted by the Kansas City Royals to play baseball as well. The one, two to the nine hole hitter. Fastball raises the outside corner, scales down looking. West Mifflin, Pennsylvania, just outside of Pittsburgh. There is no Dunder, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Six strikeouts for Crivero. Taking a look at this pitch that just dots the outside corner. Brett Smith, the strikeouts have been a problem for him. In seven at-bats this championship series, he has struck out six times. 0 for 2 today with two Ks. For the Patriot League Defensive Player of the Year, first team all-league pick. A unanimous selection. Fastball high, count 1-0. 320 hitter. Had a big walk-off single in the regular season against Lafayette and helped complete a sweep. Bucknell took 3-4 of four against Lehigh, swept Lafayette. Didn't lose to Holy Cross 3-4. of four. Lost to Army 3-4, of four. lost to Navy 3-4, of four, but Made the Patriot League Conference Tournament the final weekend of the regular season. Upset Navy last weekend, sweeping them. Spun foul into the netting behind home plate, count one and two. And Smith has just been behind in the count these past 48 hours. It's just been tough sledding for the catalyst. The Bucknell all-time hits King at 231. 
Been a while since the number one seed not in the championship series. And Bucknell has won it twice as the number four seed, so they've knocked out the number one twice in the semis. The one two. Curve inside. Two two. Brett Smith, mechanical engineering major. One of 10 finalists for the Senior Class Award. It will be announced next month, the College World Series. The 2 2. Makes contact, but a bouncer to second ends the frame. Joe Crivero has yielded just two hits since the first inning. Once he was given that lead, he's felt very confident on the hill. Through five, four two, Holy Cross leads Bucknell in game two on the Patriot League Network. Great weather for some father-son moments, taking in some Patriot League Championship baseball. 70 degrees sunny, a bit windy outside for game two of the Patriot League Championship Series with Holy Cross, the two seed, leading the four seed, Bucknell. One game to none, Holy Cross in search of its first ever Patriot League Tournament title in the tourney's 24 years of existence. Great to be alongside my good pal, Andy Town. I'm Justin Antwell. Alex Wojcik even the score at two back in the second as he tomahawked a home run to deep left. Holy Cross has scored four unanswered runs against the savvy senior, Mike Castellani, who just threw his 96th pitch. There's some light throwing in the Bucknell bullpen. We talked about it at the open, Castellani's uh, pitch count probably going to range from 120 to 125 today for the coaching staff. Count one and one. It's not like they really have anything to save him for because if Holy if Bucknell doesn't win in this start today, then that's all they've got. Their season is over. Freshman Nate Grissius, their midweek starter, tossing lightly. Wojcik puts a charge in this one to deep center, but the defensive player of the year drifts back and Smith uh, corral it. And there's one away in the top of the sixth inning. A couple pretty well hit balls for Wojtek today. Obviously the home run and then a couple of fly outs to center field. He's been swinging the bat well for a guy who these numbers don't really shake you up too much if you're an opposing pitcher, but the way he's swinging the bat today certainly should. Deep breath from Castellani. Rocks fires. Lined in the netting behind home plate for McCormick who's one for two. A lot of balance, this Holy Cross attack. Six different players have tallied a hit thus far. We're not even through six frames yet. Check swing, did he go? Yes, he did, says the home plate umpire, John Epperson, no even need to appeal. Count 0 and 2. He pointed down to Tim Detweiler, who then looked over his shoulder in the right field. He's like, wait, me? <laughs> you don't need to appeal that. You already called him. Castellani grew up just about an hour outside of Worcester in Avon, Connecticut. His sister went to Holy Cross. His father was an outstanding golfer at Holy Cross. Foul tip into the mini of Klugerman. Strike three. I don't think he hung on to it. And he, if, yeah, he didn't hung it. He only tried to sell it because he, he threw it around the diamond, trying to coax the home plate umpire, John Epperson, into calling it a strike. But apparently it skipped off the dirt. And new life for McCormick. It sounded like it hit the dirt, but a good job trying to sell it. Castellani's passed the 100-pitch plateau, 114 last weekend. Breaking ball swung and a miss. Klugerman gets a better angle this time, makes a crisp throw, made a throwing error in that same play last inning, and there's two away. Another strikeout for Mike Castellani. Season high eight today for the senior. Done a great job even after giving up a couple of home runs. One was a solo shot, and, and we saw coming out earlier was... Scott Heather after giving up the two-run homer and then the single ensuing from Kellen McCormick. Next inning will be a good chance for Bucknell. They'll send up the teeth of their order, Rafferty, Clark, and Johnson. Each have a hit today. The 0-1.
bunted down the third base line. Clark picks it up, fires to first, not nearly in time. What a pretty bunt single for Chris Rinaldi. Back-to-back -back multi hit games for the nine hole hitting shortstop. Caught everybody on the Bucknell defense by surprise there. Didn't expect him to be squaring around a bunt with two outs here trying to get the base hit, but he does just that, catches it off the end of the bat. Probably put a little bit more on it than he wanted to. Got out to Sam Clark pretty quickly who was able to at least get the throw over on target, but just a little bit late against the speedy Rinaldi. And I think Rinaldi has to be thinking about stealing a bag here. But Hassell hacks to the first pitch. In play, shallow left, John Paul Bell races after it and makes the grab. Five and a half in the books at beautiful Hanover Insurance Park. At Fit and Field, the Crusaders inching closer to their first ever PL title. More ahead on the Patriot League Network, powered by Campus Insiders. Welcome back to Hanover Insurance Park at Fit and Field. Just about ready for the bottom of the sixth inning. Holy Cross doubling up Bucknell 4-2. There are 10 finalists in Division I College Baseball for the Senior Class Award, and this championship series is fortunate enough to feature two of them in Anthony Critelli for the Holy Cross College Crusaders and Brett Smith for the Bucknell University Bison. The Senior Class Award will, winner will be announced next month at the College World Series at TD Ameritrade Ballpark. It's all about community, classroom, character, and competition. Brett Smith, a mechanical engineering major. Anthony Critelli, an economics major. Critelli helps out with big brothers, big sisters in his free time as well. Of course, to see the numbers on the field, part of the consideration, but that award is a lot more than just what you see on the field. Teeth of the order due up for the Bucknell Bison is the 79th pitch by Joe Crivero, one of 13 seniors on Holy Cross. Sails up and away, count 1-0. and oh. Great to be alongside Andy Town. I'm Justin Antwell. Holy Cross leads this best of three championship series one game to none, thanks to a come from behind 4-3 victory yesterday. Rafferty, who was drafted after his junior campaign, came back his senior season for moments like this to try and bookend his four-year tenure with another ring. He won one his freshman year in 2014. Has himself a 1-1 count. Shoots this one through the left side for a base hit. Good piece of hitting by Danny Rafferty. And all of a sudden, Andy, the tying run is digging into the batter's box on the left side with Sweet Swing and Sammy Clark. Another real close game. Holy Cross has played plenty of them this year. Very experienced, but that right there, since a leadoff single in the second inning, Joe Crivero has faced the minimum number of batters. Now, here with a runner on first and nobody out, still a chance that he could get through this inning with that holding true. Had the leadoff single in the fourth inning when John Paul Bell got on base, but then was caught stealing, so still one, two, three. Change up, sails away, count one and oh. Clark has homered in each of the first two games in this championship series. A solo shot to dead center in the fourth yesterday. A two-run home run to right field in the first today. Leads the team in home runs with eight. Has accounted for over 40% of Bucknell's long balls this season. He's hit eight of their 19. You mentioned before coming into the inning, Cravero had thrown 78 pitches in the game. That was 25 of those were in the first inning, so just 53 in the four since. The 2-0 nips the outside corner for a called strike count, 2-1. and one. Clark is a laid-back Southern California kid. Actually went to the same high school as Nolan Arenado, the standout third baseman for the Colorado Rockies, who was on Team USA in the World Baseball Classic in March when they won the title. And over winter break, he hangs out with Nolan Arenado and they train at their old high school stomping grounds. Sam Clark's high school was once ranked eighth in the country his senior year. They had won seven straight league titles, 2007 to 2013. Clark a part of the last four of those. The three one up and away and the first two runners are aboard here in the home half of the sixth inning. And the batter is Luke Johnson, who's come on real strong. He has 20 RBI his last 18 games. Got a double following Clark's home run in the first inning. So he's already shown the power today and flew out to left field and his only other at bat in the third inning. So he's at least gotten it into the outfield. Right at Schlick last time and a conversation on the mound is Greg Desenzo 
saunters on out to talk with Joe Cravero and the entire infield. This is when baseball gets spicy and juicy. It's a chess match here. Coach DeCenzo out to me with his defense and his starting pitcher. There's some activity warming up in the Holy Cross bullpen on the left field line, and Coach Heather is meeting with Luke Johnson. Probably thinking about a potential bunt situation, but here's the thing. Johnson, I just mentioned his propensity to drive in runs. He's the cleanup hitter. I would think you would let him swing away here. He's got 27 RBIs this season. Justin Finnan warming up in the Holy Cross bullpen. Played umpire heads out, breaks up the conversation on the mound as DeCenzo jogs back. And another interesting situation, of course, it's not going to be an easy game here in the Patriot League Championship Series. Certainly wasn't yesterday. Yesterday, Holy Cross played in their 14th one run ball game this season. Two on, nobody out for the cleanup hitter, Luke Johnson who in the opening day roster back in February, he was hitting in the eight hole. That's how much he's improved throughout his junior campaign. He does square around a bunt, lays it down the third baseline, double clutching, gloved, and the sacrifice put out is successful, the defensive end for Holy Cross, and Johnson will get some hugs and hand pounds in the dugout, so Coach Heather does want to play some small ball. Well, I think what really helps you in that situation and, and kind of take the bat out of his hands, just make him put down that sacrifice bunt is the fact that you had nobody out and now you're taking away the chance for a double play. So yeah, you would like to see Luke Johnson swing away and maybe get himself a single that would score one run, but now you set it up for your number five hitter, John Paul Bell. If he gets a single, which would be his second today, that drives in two runs most likely. Bell hacks one into the netting behind home plate, count 0-1, a 275 hitter on the season. Hits over 300 with runners in scoring position. It was a good bunt by Johnson because uh, he made the third baseman come in and field that baseball. You know, if you deaden that right in front of home plate, the defense could have gotten the force out at third. The 0-1 to Bell, old school, no batting gloves. Bouncer in the dirt, good stop by the senior Wojtek. Sticks across the board at one ball, one strike, and one out. Looked like it went through his body. As soon as he received that ball off the bounce, went right into his bare hand, and he pulled it behind his back, maybe trying to get the runner Rafferty to come a little bit further off the bag, fool him into thinking, no, I don't have the ball. If he gets off the bag, he can throw it down to third and get the tag. The 1-1 one, one to one of just two freshmen in the starting lineup for John Paul Bell. Uh, for Bucknell, it's John Paul Bell, but he will not see a pitch as Cravero steps off. Got to be very careful stepping off there, especially with the runners on second and third. Do not want to commit a balk. The 1-1. One, one. Another little splitter smothered by Wojtek. Count pushes to two and one. We've talked a lot about family athletics. John Paul Bell has got some athleticism in the family as well. Cousin of Ty Montgomery for the Green Bay Packers. And yesterday we saw Bell make a couple over the shoulder grabs in the alley in left center. He looked like his cousin, former Stanford All-American with the over the shoulder grabs. A single does not necessarily tie this game as Clark is the tying run at second. Depends where it goes to right. how well it's hit. We saw some base running issues with Bucknell yesterday that if loomed it, large. If it's a blooper that falls in front of somebody in the outfield that can come on you know, moving towards home plate, have the momentum all ready to make the throw, then you likely hold the runner at third. But if it gets out, even if it's you know, right at somebody deep in the outfield if they have to chase it back maybe a single but likely can score two. The 2-1 check swing did he go yes he did says the home plate umpire John Epperson Scott Heather extremely irate down the third base line barking at Epperson he probably at least wanted some help right there I think that's why he's mad he at least wanted an appeal that's a huge swing pitch because 3-1 and 2-2 two -two, it's a big difference it was pretty close I'm not entirely convinced that he went around but I think you're absolutely right in that situation. Would have been great to ask for help from James Albert down the third base line. 2-2 two -two count, infield back. They'll concede a run for an out. That's what you want to do when you nurse a two-run lead at this juncture. Ground ball to second base. Coming home, it's Rafferty. It'll be an RBI for Bell. But Holy Cross, they're satisfied. 
They still lead by one. Bucknell does have the tying run now 90 feet away for a 333 hitter with runners in scoring position in Kiefer Rawlings. Real tough situation here again. So many one-run ball games that Holy Cross has played in this year. And Greg Desenzo talked about that earlier this week. They've got those experience, and they expect them to be close. They lost, uh, I believe it was 3-2 last year in game one of the Patriot League Championship Series in 10 innings, one nothing in the championship game, and in game three that was. Big spot for the junior from Maryland, Kiefer Rawlings. 270 hitter this year after just a 238 hitter combined his first two years. Curveball breaks in, belt high for a strike. Count levels at one and one. Two outs, runner on third. Holy Cross clinging to a 4-3 lead. The pitch. Curveball high. Count two and one. It'll be interesting to see how they use all league reliever George Capen. Uh, today here, Andy, through 40 pitches to tally five outs yesterday, much needed outs in relief of Brendan King, who dazzled through seven and a third. The 2-1 swing and a miss. Count two and two. Rowling needs to take a deep breath. You don't need a two-run home run here. A short single can tie this up. Well, Capeman will definitely be available for as long as he's asked to go. He had an inning at the end of game one last week in the doubleheader against Army Closed out that game with the bases loaded, got a double play, and then three and two-thirds innings in game two to close it out. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Tying run at third base for Kiefer Rawlings. Swing and a miss, strike three. Joe Crevero is fired up. He minimizes trouble. Six in the books from Hanover Insurance Park at Fit and Field. Holy Cross in a one-run game once again. They nurse a 4-3 lead here on the Patriot League Network, powered by Campus Insiders. A violent fist pump from Joe Crevero to end last half inning. As he minimizes trouble, the score 4-3 through six innings, taking to the rest of the way. It's my good pal, Andy Town. Uh, thanks very much, Justin Antwell, as we head to the final third of at least regulation here. Wouldn't be very surprising to see extra innings the way that this Patriot League tournament has gone. Game two last week against Army was also a one-run game, a 5-4 victory for the Holy Cross Crusaders. Right now standing at 4-3, the winner earning an automatic bid to the NCAA tournament, a place that Holy Cross has not been since 1978. Bucknell was there a few years ago, and this year's seniors were freshmen as Bill Schlick takes ball one outside from Mike Castellani who comes into the inning with 106 pitches thrown, 71 of those for strikes. Schlick laces this one out to left center field. This is getting down in a hurry in front of Brett Smith, the center fielder, and Schlick is on with his first hit of the day. 64 teams qualify for the NCAA tournament, and Ian, one has been secured thus far. That was Yale, who earlier in the midweek uh, defeated Penn in the Ivy League championship. Uh, two more bids will be secured today. The MEAC final is going on between Norfolk State and Bethune-Cookman, and then, of course, this one between Holy Cross and Bucknell. Yale winning the Red Wolf division in the Ivy League. Penn winning the Lou Gehrig. Had to delay that championship series due to rain. Castellani looks over, throws to the plate, and Austin Mazel bunts it foul. He's got three strikeouts today, trying to get himself at least something productive here, even if he doesn't get himself on base. Try and move the runner over from first to second after the leadoff single by Schlick. I'm with you. Just, just to get the confidence going, lay down a sacrifice bunt, get back to the dugout, get some hugs and hand pounds from your teammates. You'll feel good about yourselves. And you have a chance for some insurance runs. And look, yesterday they played for some insurance runs late in the game. They obviously needed them, knowing Bucknell's resiliency. Uh, I think he should be laying down again and squaring. But they throw over and check on the runner. They did that a lot earlier in the game, especially against Josh Hassell, the leadoff man. And seven or eight throws. Holy Cross has had runners on in every single inning today. Again, Mazel squares around a bunt down the first baseline, and it's the catcher, Klugerman, picking it up to retire Mazel 2-3. 
In fact, it was the second baseman, Madigan, over to cover. So 2-4 on the sack bunt, but Schlick does move advanced, or does move up to second, exactly what Mazel wanted to do. Yeah, a very good bunt right there. He was able to kind of lightly catch the ball. That's what you want to do when you bunt. You don't want to go to the ball. You want the ball to come to you. And Scott Heather is going to make the hook on Castellani after 111 pitches. A runner in scoring position for the Holy Cross Crusaders. A 1-0 lead right now as they look to close out their first ever Patriot League championship. A pitching change coming for the Bucknell Bison. There goes Mike Castellani. We'll tell you about the new guy in just a moment on the Patriot League Network on Campus Insiders. Mike Castellani's day is done. Nate Grisius coming on in relief out of the bullpen for the Bucknell Bison. It'll be his 13th appearance of the season. Did make one start earlier. The first year player from Vienna, Virginia steps to the mound. Had pretty good command of his fastball. Also quality curveball and changeup. Three pitches out of the bullpen. And he has got a runner in scoring position with one out in the top of the seventh inning as he comes up against the three-time first-team All-Patriot League player, Anthony Critelli. And Grisius did not pitch too much in Patriot League play, primarily a midweek guy for those non-conference game. And this is a warm welcome to the Patriot League tournament for him. As you mentioned, he's facing one of the most feared sluggers in the league. Critelli already out with a home run today. That was last time up to straight away center field. A ball that probably would not have gotten out if this game were played at Depew Field. Snuck over at the 385-foot center field here at Hanover Insurance Park. Takes one down and away. It's one and one. At Depew Field, undergoing a few changes this offseason. Adding in some new seating, a press box, concession area, restrooms for the fans. Right now, seating capacity of 500, adding 800 with the end of the season. Critelli sees another strike go by, one and two. That's a testament to the Bucknell baseball program. You know, so successful, and it's only going to help recruiting. With that's what you have to do. You have to keep on bumping up your facilities. And Holy Cross has as good as it gets in the Patriot League. Bucknell will get there next year. Already a high quality playing surface. Ramp up the rest of the facilities. A hard ground ball over to Luke Johnson here. Throw over is a little bit off target, but they're quickly and Rafferty able to make the catch. Advancing to third is Schlick, and Holy Cross has an insurance run 90 feet away with two outs in the seventh. That was a mature play by Luke Johnson. He initially thought about, as we take a look at the replay, throwing a third. You see him field this ground ball. He kind of looks at the runner momentarily and shuffles his feet towards first base, saying, you know what? Let's not compound this inning. Get the sure out. There's two outs. The infield's still going to play back, and we can get out of this unscathed. Cam O'Neill's been fantastic against the Bison in his career. Still looking for a hit this afternoon. Pitch gets away, but not far enough for O'Neill to wave home Schlick. A 392 hitter, Andy, with runners in scoring position. This is one of those student athletes that Coach DeCenzo wants at the dish in these kind of moments. Neil stepping up this year in the regular season alone. He was 6 for 11 with five runs and six ribbies, a pair of home runs against Bucknell. That pitch on the bottom outside corner of the zone called for a strike against O'Neill. It's one and one. Holy Cross looking for an extra run. They needed the insurance they got for themselves yesterday. High and tight. He's got his face out of the way, nearly caught the shoulder sleeve. Missed him, ended up as a ball, but a little bit close. 2-1 two with two outs in the top of the seventh inning. Runner at third as O'Neill sees one well out of the zone through the left-handed batter's box. Two ground outs to third and a strikeout today. Second batter... And Nate Grecius is seeing. O'Neill 0 for 3. Grisius got the first out on a 6-3 ground out. They did advance Schlick to third base. Grisius trying to save Castellani from the having that run charged to him. 
Full count here to Cam O'Neill following the foul. The junior waits on the payoff pitch. It's outside, ball four. Runners on the corners for Thomas Russo. Not a whole lot of walks taken today for Holy Cross. That's just number two. Last four hitters in the Holy Cross order done a really good job here, Andy. Four hits, including that big two-run home run by the man on deck, Wojtek, that tied the game back in the second. Five hits, in fact, including Chris Rinaldi's surprise bunt. You got Russo with the right. single in the run scored, Wojtek's home run. McCormick's got a base knock, and Rinaldi the double in a run scored, plus that bunt single. First pitch strike to Russo. Also reached on a wild pitch, but then was picked off with an early jump. You could think about that old Little League first and third try and steal play where you get in the run down long enough between first and second and the runner from third breaks for home. A little bit tougher to do here with two outs. A little bit more wiggle room if you do that with one. But you never know. It could be worth a try. Depends how confident they're feeling against Nate Grisius. Ten hits on the board for Holy Cross today. Throw over to first. Got to make sure those throws are on point because if they're not, if it gets away, that's a run scored. One error committed by the Bucknell defense today. Didn't end up costing them. Outside, Klugerman tried to frame it. Couldn't get it back over the plate enough to convince John Epperson. This is just the second different Bucknell reliever to pitch this month. It's May 20th. Got complete games last weekend from Connor Van Hoos and today's starter Mike Castellani shutting down the powerful Navy offense. Another throw over to first. The only other reliever was Jack Simpson who threw two thirds of an inning yesterday in relief of staff ace Connor Van Hoos. And it was no secret, I think everybody who follows college baseball, particularly in the Patriot League, media members, broadcasters, team officials, knows that Bucknell's bread and butter is that duo of Van Hoost and Castellani. And they were very solid this weekend. They weren't as great as they were last weekend, but it's hard to replicate. Held the mids to just one run in those two games. Fouled off into the screen. Two balls and two strikes now on Russo. And what you love about those two, even if they don't have their A-plus stuff, they're going to keep your team in the game. I mean, Van Hoos, he gave up two unearned runs yesterday. really wasn't his fault. Well, Scott Heather has said this season he's pretty happy if those guys are going at about 65% executing their pitches. Last week, about 80 85% they were. Here comes the 2-2 two -two runner was going, but the pitch fouled off. Pretty well hit down the left field line, but... No question off the bat, it would be foul. 4-3 the score, Holy Cross on top. Top of the seventh inning, runners on the corners and two down. A potentially final game in the Patriot League Championship Series. If Holy Cross wins, if Bucknell wins, then we'll have a game two today. That's yeah, a quick turnaround. It'll only be about 25 to 30 minutes after the first uh, final pitch of game one. Look over to third. The pitch to the plate. Outside. Runner was going. They've got another pickle on the base pass. We'll see if they do what you were thinking before the dive in in time. Schlick is called out at the plate by John Epperson. He doesn't agree with it. I think that's the right call, but heads up defense there. Holy Cross tried to take advantage of it, and we'll take another look at it real quick going out. It's a great job by Luke Johnson. He waited long enough. He felt the break from the runner at third. That was Bill Schlitt, and he fired home to the third base side of home plate. Klugerman emphatic after the tag. Headed to the stretch, we'll get some peanuts and Cracker Jacks here at Fitton Field and be back with the bottom of the seventh in just a moment. Evan Klugerman leading things off for the Bucknell Bison, down by a run in the bottom of the seventh inning in the Patriot League Championship Series. 
Left-handed catcher who is pretty familiar with this ballpark. Spent his summer here in 2016 with the Worcester Bravehearts under Greg Desenzo. Yes. First pitch from Joe Crevero, who's still out there hurling on the mound, missed for a ball. Eight for 14, this Patriot League tournament for Klugerman had, he capped off that great first and third rundown play by tagging out Schlitt, trying to steal home. On the outside corner there for Crevero. He's got eight strikeouts today. One of those was Klugerman in the fourth inning. Had a stretch where he'd faced the minimum number of batters following a leadoff single in the second. Got the next three. All three in the third flew out to left. There's a called strike on Klugerman, one and two. And in the fourth, the leadoff single, but then a caught stealing took John Paul Bell off the base pass. Keeper Rawlings and Evan Klugerman both retired. And a one, two, three, fifth before the leadoff single. And then Danny Rafferty coming around to score in the sixth. And Sam Clark was left on third following the walk. This will be the 101st pitch for Joe Crevero here, Andy. He's got a ball and two strikes. And just like we expected for Castellani, imagine he'll be able to get over that 100 pitch threshold pretty easily. And he is over it. Gets a strike out there. Number eight of the afternoon. No betting. Up comes Evan Madigan, who mentioned earlier came from Red Bank Catholic High School. Mascot was the Casey's, which has probably got to be the only high school in the country called the Casey's. <laughs> Here he comes from the right side. Waits on the first pitch, misses outside from Crevero. Named after Monsignor James Casey, who actually got his bachelor's degree from Holy Cross. St. James Church is the church on campus there at Red Bank Catholic High School. Big swing and a miss there for Madigan. Of course, we're sitting at top Mount St. James here at Holy Cross, so Monsignor Casey has actually served some time in the Navy as well before heading back to St. James Parish. I pop up right side foul. It was a sign there after graduating from seminary and being ordained as a priest. Then went off to Navy chaplain service and returned to his only assignment of his life at St. James Parish. He's a big guy in sports as well. Got funding for the school's athletic programs. As here, Madigan sends one out into left field on a line caught by Schlick. And that's the second out of the inning. Chucky Scales will come up now 0 for 2. A crisp line drive from Madigan just hung up a bit too much. As ranging over and let it was Bill Schlick. Number nine hitter in scales here. Out of a de facto second leadoff man with his abilities, especially the speed he's got, if he can get on, definitely a threat to get himself around, whether it's stolen bases or guys behind him, which would be the top of the order, getting singles. Able to move himself around pretty quickly. Two down, first pitch swinging into the glove of Chris Rinaldi, the shortstop. Another one, two, three inning for Joe Crevero. We go to the eighth, and the Crusaders are two innings away from their first ever Patriot League title. Hey, Chris, he is still on the mound for the Bucknell Bison. First and so far only man out of the bullpen in relief of Mike Castellani, who went six and a third innings. Ten hits, four runs, all of them earned, and he is on the hook for the loss right now. Did have a season-high eight strikeouts in this afternoon's contest. Started out strong, two in the first inning. Did give up a two-run home run to Alex Wojtek in the second. It tied things up at the time, and since then, Holy Cross has scored two more. First pitch to Thomas Russo, who's back in the box after the caught stealing ended the seventh inning. Kind of a double steal attempt that you had mentioned before. Kind of try and catch the defense off guard. Get a guy in a pickle long enough for the run to score. Got it with two outs. It was a 2-2 count at the time, or a 3-2 count with the pitch it happened on being a ball. 1-1 one, one now to Russo as he comes up with a fresh count. Jack Graybeck and Jeff Gottesman are playing catch in the Bucknell bullpen. Those were their three and four starters 
during the league season and the regular season. One of them will start game three if we have a game three. Anticipate it would be Gottesman if it gets that far again. And Gottesman might have the best stuff on the team per Scott Heather. Has been as consistent as he might like this year. Foul ball back to the screen. And two and two. Gottesman three and four with a 592 ERA, but as a sophomore, Scott Heather has said he, he's probably got the best stuff on the team, just the consistency is what's hurt him. Inside for a ball, another full count here on Thomas Russo. He's got a single and a run scored, reached on a strikeout wild pitch earlier, but then was caught stealing in the fifth inning. Pop up left side foul, well out of play. Two innings today have ended with caught stealings for Holy Cross offensively. This is when Nate just needs to pound the zone here. I mean, Russo does not have a home run all year. You make him get a hit. Do not walk him. Again, fisted foul. It got caught up right at the end of the netting. It extends down to the end of the Holy Cross dugout on the third baseline. Chrisius on the mound with yet another 3-2 pitch high in the air behind second base, a little bit off to the shortstop side. Luke Johnson waves nobody off really and makes the catch. So after several pitches to Thomas Russo, Nate Grisius wins the battle. Brings up Alex Wojtek, had that two run home run back in the second to tie the game. Here was that home run here, Andy. Just drilled it. Popped it out to left center field. He was hit by a pitch just now. Right away, runner on. Hit him on the uh, lower extremity. Looked like left shin, I believe. Kellen McCormick, the DH, comes up with a runner on and one out. Actually got him in the elbow taking a second look at it. He wears that Barry Bonds elbow guard, so that's all right. He's got the pad, so no harm. He's happy to take that pace. Well, the runner on as Holy Cross looks to add at least one more run. Here's McCormick, first pitch fastball in there for a strike from Grecius. He's touched 90 before. You want to keep this a one-run deficit here, Buck. Now looking ahead to the bottom of the eighth inning, Andy, you know, I know they always think about the ninth inning, the most crucial inning to mount a rally. Well, the eighth inning might be their best chance because they have the top of the order coming up with three seniors in Smith, Rafferty, and Clark. That was a throw over to first before pitch to the plate to McCormick. Wojtek has not attempted a stolen base this year. Holy Cross has 19 stolen bases on the season. They've been caught twice today, both ending innings. Outside, ball two, throw down to first, not in time. Holy Cross trying to close this out. The seniors improving on their results from the year by four each year so far in their collegiate careers. This year, the goal make make it to at least the NCAA Regionals. Overall record of 22 and 25 coming into today. They were 12 and eight in Patriot League play, had been picked to win the league. Finished behind the Navy midshipmen. Navy knocked out last weekend in the semis by this Bucknell Bison team. Bucknell trying to win the Patriot League tournament for the third time as a four seed, second time at Fitton Field. High pop up right side, foul, out of play. Couple long battles in these at-bats against Nate Grecius. Kellen McCormick here at the plate. Runner on first is Wojtek after the hit by pitch. McCormick one for three with a couple of strikeouts today. All that against Mike Castellani. Little bit high, another full count. 
Grisius came up. First batter he faced was Anthony Critelli. Got him to ground out. Had a full count on Cam O'Neill. Actually walked Cam O'Neill, then had a full count on Thomas Russo. Runner is going here, line drive, left center field gap. Turning around second, heading for third is Wojtek, and he will see a stop sign waiting at third base. A double, though, for Callan McCormick. Puts two runners in scoring position as Holy Cross looks to add on a little bit of padding. That was a perfectly executed hit and run because Luke Johnson leaves his slot at shortstop, opens up a vacant hole. You see him on the replay, slide over to second base. If he stays put, it's probably an L6 put out, maybe even double up the runner, and the inning comes to a halt. McCormick will come out, and we've got a pinch runner. Jared Enders coming up. He's been pretty successful as a pinch hitter this season. The Holy Cross Crusaders comes on as a pinch runner here. And we will see the pitching coach come out for the Bucknell Bison. It's Jason Knights, longtime pitching coach, grew up in Mifflinburg, Pennsylvania. I don't believe we've seen a call to the bullpen yet. So until there's a signal, keep it here. Imagine with Knights coming out, it'll just be a conversation on the mound. All the infield coming in with runners on second and third. Do see some action out there. Jeff Gottesman is warming up. And Knights will walk off the mound. The infield will disperse back to their positions. So no change here for the Bucknell Bison. And Jared Enders, the pinch runner on second base. Alex Wojtek is on third. And I think that conversation was about, hey, Nate, this is your last batter because, um, you know, you got Josh um, Hassell coming up next, and you probably want one of your starting pitchers, either Grayback or Gottesman, to face him, knowing how clutch he's been this year, uh, this series. Already has three hits on the afternoon with the fly out to center his last time up, but Chris Rinaldi steps to the plate first. He's got a pair of knocks today, including a double and a run scored. Also had a surprise bunt, could drop one down here. Try the suicide squeeze, just one out. A little bit high there on Rinaldi. Infield plays in, rightfully so at this juncture of the game. You can't let the lead balloon any larger. Have to keep the deficit at one if you're Coach Heather's squad. See if Rinaldi didn't square around a bunt there, he could swing around and just knock a lazy single over the infield's heads as well, the way they're playing in. Good stop by Klugerman. Slid over to his right with, with the pitch well out of the zone. And all the quickly signaling to Wojtek, stay there at third. A two ball count. Imagine that a lot of the pitches in this at bat will be around the outside of the strike zone. Right side foul is where all the punches one over and out of play. Stream of children running after it along the concourse here at Hanover Insurance Park. Two balls and a strike for Rinaldi. Dance around, see if you can get him to chase it something. Ideally get a strike out in this situation. At the very worst, you want a ground ball where you can really ideally look the runners back. Maybe concede one run to get an out. A little bit away that time. Long look at it for home plate umpire John Epperson, but it's a ball. If you get a walk here, it sets up a double play, but it brings up the top of the right. order. And Hassell might be front runner for tournament MVP or at least one of the great candidates for that prestigious honor. 3-1. It's been fouled back over the press box. Dream scenario for Bucknell, you get a little line drive right at Sam Clark at third base where you can just touch the bag, maybe even, you know, it looks like the, the middle infield is playing well enough off second that Jared Enders would likely have enough time to get back depending on how far he goes. Hard ground to right at the shortstop, throw comes home and the tag is applied. So knocked out at home is Wojtek. He is retired 6-2 
That moves Enders over to third, puts Rinaldi on first with the fielder's choice. Runners on the corners now with two outs in the bottom of the eighth inning, but a smart defensive play. Great play. We take another look. It was a kind of a tough hop, took a high bounce in the last second, but Johnson moves his glove up in time, throws to the third base side of home plate, and Klugerman catches the ball with two hands, fundamentals, and provides the tag on the feet first slide. Scott Heather stays put in the dugout. He'll let Nate Grisius face Josh Hassell. Three for four today. Leadoff single. Another knock in the second. And an RBI in the fourth. Foul out of play. That was a go-ahead RBI in the fourth. And Anthony Critelli would be the game-winning home run in the fifth inning if the score stays as is right now and Bucknell does not score again. Second time in as many innings, a runner's been gunned down at home plate for Holy Cross as they inch for some insurance runs. How fitting would it be for Anthony Critelli's shot to go down as the winning homer. Here's a line drive in the left center field. This will get out to Smith. One run will score. Held it second momentarily, but then Smith knocks it down. Couldn't handle it cleanly. That gives Rinaldi an extra 90 feet. It's a 5-3 game still with runners on the corners for the Crusaders. And that MVP case for Josh Hassell just gets louder and louder, Andy. His, as you mentioned, fourth hit of the day, his fourth RBI of this championship series, and all four RBI have come with two outs. We'd have to imagine that that's an RBI single for his cell, put Rinaldi to second, but then an E8, and I would imagine in the field, that gives Rinaldi third base. His cell stayed at first, and they do in fact put the E8 up on the scoreboard, second error of the day for the Bucknell Bison. That was an error by the defensive player of the year, Brett Smith. Could be a costly one, a two-run game now, 5-3. The run was coming home either way, but at this point, if Chris Rinaldi comes home, depending on the play, it could be an unearned run because that play would not have resulted in an out, so we'll have to wait and see how things play out. Of course, Nate Grisius trying to just get out of the jam and not have to worry about a high fly ball right side. Over goes Chucky Scales, chasing into foul territory. Did not make the catch, but it was in the bullpen. And he doesn't have to worry too much about it. Unless, of course, Bill Schlick can make something happen on the next pitch. Take another look. Great effort by Chucky Scales. Comes a long way. There's not much foul territory here at Hanover Park at uh, Hanover Insurance Park at Fit and Field, but scales lay down. That's what you have to do with a, with a trophy on the line. 5-3 the Holy Cross lead at two. Runner at third is Chris Rinaldi. Josh Hissell at first. Off speed outside, caught the corner. Ball in two strikes now to Bill Schlick. He's got a single, he was the one caught stealing, thrown out at home that ended the seventh inning. Holy Cross trying a double steal. Got O'Neill into a pickle. Didn't work out for him. Hard grounder foul towards the protective fencing in front of the Holy Cross dugout. Schlick still alive with a one-two count. 12 hits now on the board for Holy Cross. Still all unearned runs. So all earned runs, I should say. Hard grounder, fair off the third base bag. Pops down towards the corner. One run has scored. Rinaldi is in. Coming around third and scoring on the double for Schlick is Josh Hassell. And Holy Cross has made it a four run game at 7-3. Well, we talk about the two out hitting. That's what wins championships. And Holy Cross has gotten a heavy dose of that the last 48 hours. Three two-out runs yesterday. And then today, Hassell's RBI two-out single in the fourth broke the 2-2 tie. 
And then three more two-hour runs here in the eighth, Andy. And look at that Holy Cross bench. They're fired up. Jean-Paul Bell had trouble playing it in the corner. And this bench is on fire. So that will, in fact, be an earned run against Nate Grisius with the double down the line. And that will do it for the reliever. The bullpen back to work for the Bucknell Bison. We'll tell you more about it in just a moment. A 7-3 Holy Cross lead in the top of the eighth inning on the Patriot League Network on Campus Insiders. Bill Schlick, the two-run double waiting on second base. Huge insurance runs for the Holy Cross Crusaders in their quest to become Patriot League champions for the first time. That's the way it's going for Holy Cross. Slices one in the third baseline. It bumps off the third base bag. Ricochets deep in the corner. Bell has trouble playing it. It plates a pair, and Bucknell was so close to getting out of that jam, Andy. Remember, second and third, one out. They get the grounder that they need. You were calling for it, the grounder to Johnson. They gun down the runner at the plate, but back-to-back, -back, two out RBI knocks by Hassell and Schlitt, top two hitters in the order. At the plate now is the rookie of the year, Austin Mazel. Top freshman in the Patriot League this season, however, has not done a whole lot in this tournament. He's 0 for 13, does have a sacrifice bunt last time up. In the seventh inning, knocks one foul off the handle of the bat. Critelli makes the one-handed catch off the screen. And the new pitcher is sophomore southpaw Jack Grayback, who was Bucknell's number four starter to end the year, number two starter to begin the year in the weekend rotation. Swapped with Castellani, two and seven with an 8.69 ERA. Grayback is making his 13th appearance. Eight of those, or seven of those, excuse me, have been starts. 39 and a third innings as he misses outside. Two balls and a strike on Maisel. Graybeck's from New York, but he's actually a big time Red Sox fan. His father grew up a Red Sox fan. He idolizes John Lester, and he, he kind of has Lester's delivery mechanic, so to speak. That kind of tight coil and release. Grounder over to second base, and it looks like one batter faced here in the frame for Graybeck as Bucknell finally gets out of it, but three-run score for Holy Cross, and the Crusaders leave a runner in scoring position as well. Bucknell with some work to do in the bottom of the eighth. Next on the Patriot League Network. The pitcher on the mound for the Holy Cross Crusaders, Justin Finan coming in with a little bit of wiggle room after three runs in the top half of the eighth inning for Holy Cross, making a 7-3 ball game, finally making his 12th appearance of the season. Yeah, he threw four and two-thirds innings of one hit, no run baseball in relief against Bucknell last month right here at Fit and Field. So that has, to have, that has to give him some confidence. He earned the win in that relief appearance. Big guy at six foot two, 220 pounds, native of Rhode Island, an economics major. Not too far away in Barrington. Take 146, be there and not too long. And a four run cushion now after it was 4-3 when he started warming up in the bullpen. Comes on in relief of Joe Cravero. A great outing from him today. He goes seven innings and had eight strikeouts on the day. Gave up just six hits, three runs. They were all earned as Holy Cross has not committed an error on the afternoon, and just one walk issued by Cravero. This is Bucknell's best chance. Top of the order, three seniors. Down by four, down to their final six outs. First pitch swinging for Smith. At the third baseman, Russo, throw a little bit off target, but the long stretch by Critelli is able to complete the out. Smith has been shut down by Holy Cross pitching in this series. He is one for nine six strikeouts. There's the bouncer over to Thomas Russo, able to come in and make the quick transfer over to his throwing hand and get the throw across. So Justin Finan has his first out. Brings up Danny Rafferty, who's scored twice today, two of the three Bison runs. First pitch in there for a strike from Finan. Rivero getting the win last week against Army in game two. Looking for the win today to seal the Patriot League championship. 
And four different teams have won the crown the last four years. Holy Cross looking to be the fifth in five years. They've been in the championship series now five times in eight seasons. Pop up left side, foul into the stands. That'll be a souvenir. And pretty even league lately. Seniors trying to win the title. 13 of them this year. Didn't make it to the tournament as freshman. Bouncer over to second. Came off a little bit awkwardly. O'Neill knocked it down at first, then picked it up and completed the out for three. And that's two outs in the bottom of the eighth inning. And the good news for Holy Cross, Sam Clark could hit one that could orbit the earth, and they'd still nurse a three-run lead. Now Bucknell just four outs away from conceding the championship to Holy Cross. Sam Clark at the plate now, a home run and a walk with a fly out, and this one is hit well out to left field. This is gone, his second home run of the day and third of the series. Sammy Clark has been fantastic. That's just that effortless, free and easy swing. And you know what, Holy Cross can live with that because it's just a solo shot. But Sam Clark, you know, he's going to try and will this team back and he's impressing some scouts that are on hand in Worcester. The senior is not ready to graduate quite yet. Ceremony starting 10.30 tomorrow morning. He wouldn't mind a short night after the bus ride back to Lewisburg. He'd like to have a game too, but still three more runs to go for the Bucknell Bison. That time again going opposite field. That's where both his home run and his double went yesterday. His home run back in the first inning today was mashed to right field. Here's a hard hit line drive into left field again, this time for Luke Johnson. He's got two base hits today, plus the sacrifice bunt. And how big are those three runs last half inning, all with two outs. They loomed so large, Andy. I said the same thing yesterday in the late stages of the game one. Look, Bucknell is as gritty and pesky as they get. They will not fold and lay down. They got some really competitive student athletes, coaches with a high IQ. Down in the dirt, blocked by Wojtek. And had, Buck, or had Holy Cross not scored those three runs, we'd have a tie ball game right now. Right. And uh, Desenzo will out, come out and calm down. Fine and all of a sudden, one more run gets to the plate, then you could have the tying run. One more runner gets on, and the tying run comes to the plate. Rawlings is the tying run on deck, has four homers in the season. They've now had four home runs in the game. Three of them have been followed with by hits. And each of those three have been followed by a trip to the pitcher's mound by the head coach. Two for Desenzo and Scott Heather emerging from the dugout once. He's also made a couple of pitching changes that he's come out for. Both mid-inning. Holy Cross has made just one change so far, bringing Justin Finan out in relief of Joe Crevero. Did so at the beginning of this inning. He got the first two outs on the ground, but then a home run and a single to bring up John Paul Bell, who watches strike one go by. Seven runs on 13 hits for Holy Cross with two Bucknell errors. Four runs on eight hits with no Holy Cross errors. That's Bucknell's side of the scoreboard. Luke Johnson is the cleanup man on first base. Saw the throw over there. He's three for three in stolen base attempts this year. Check swing, appeal down, and third base umpire says he did not go. Uh, it's Buzz Albert. Bell had an RBI ground at his last time up, but he could have had more. There were second and third, one out. Holy Cross was conceding a run at that point. Two down, bottom, bottom of the eighth. One runner on, called strike on John Paul Bell. Two and two with two outs. He is the number five hitter in this Bison order. Kiefer Rawlings on deck is 0 for 3.
Here's the pitch. Swing, foul, tip, squeezed by Wojtek. And that'll do it for the eighth. Holy Cross bats hoping this will be the last time they come to the plate here at Fitton Field this year before the NCAA tournament. We'll see what they can do to maybe add some insurance in just a moment on the Patriot League Network. Do or die situation for the Bucknell Bison. They bring game three starter out to the mound in relief in game two today. Jeff Gottesman coming out of the bullpen after we saw Jack Grayback record the only out he was asked to record. Gottesman coming on for the ninth inning. It'll be his 12th appearance of the season, just his second out of the bullpen, but an absolutely critical situation. Sophomore from Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. Look, has good stuff. We talked about it earlier. Coach Heather thinks he has the best stuff, and the team just needs to be a bit more consistent. The stuff was apparent in high school when he threw three no-hitters in high school. He propelled Bucknell into the Patriot League tournament last year, pitching a gem in the regular season finale, but he has not pitched in the entire month of May. The last time we saw him was April 30th, Andy. It has been a while. We'll see if fatigue, or, or not fatigue, but maybe uh, too much rest is a factor for Gottesman. But he just has to keep this deficit at 7-4 to four and uh, give his team a chance. It's going to be really tough, though, because Holy Cross this year is 15-0 and 0 when they lead after eight innings, and that's the predicament now. Well, it's Anthony Critelli who's got one long ball today. He's up to the plate, one for three with the home run, also a walk to get himself on, was left on second in the third. One of eight Holy Cross runners left on base. Saw ball one go by from Gottesman. Hard screamer up the middle. That's into center field for a base hit. Holy Cross is trying to make sure they win this game. They don't want to have any nerves on whatever pitcher comes out for the bottom of the ninth inning. I'm sure Holy Cross would like to get it to the point where he could bring somebody out of the stands and they would feel no pressure coming on to win this championship for the Crusaders. That's hit number 14 of the day for Holy Cross. Down to the dirt, gets a little bit away from Klugerman, but he's able to stop it. Not far enough away for Critelli to try and advance. Such a veteran Holy Cross lineup. Six upperclassmen of the nine starters in the order. Plus they've thrown two senior starters each of the first two games in King and Crevero. Cam O'Neill hitless yesterday, looking for his First hit today, did take a walk in the seventh, fouled one back to the screen. Ball and a strike now on the junior. Second baseman for the purple and white. Fired in by Gottesman, a little bit low and away. Popped up on Klugerman a little bit, but again able to keep control. It just goes to show you that the postseason, it's a whole different beast because Holy Cross ended the year losing three of four to last place Lafayette in the regular season. Now they were still able to secure the number two seed because they got some help uh, from other teams in the league, but they've really turned it on. They sweep Army last weekend. They were down early yesterday after the Sam Clark home run. Another Sam Clark home run in the first inning today. They're behind the eight ball, but there's just no panic. You talked about it. These kids are cool, calm, and collected. Sam and they're playing their best baseball at the right time. Sam Clark with four extra base hits in this series. Three homers and a double. 2-2 two -two on the way. And that misses full count to Cam O'Neill. Have to imagine any of these balls out of the zone, the ones that get away. Critelli is really not even thinking about going for a second. You don't need runs right now, so you don't need to be a little bit extra aggressive. Just play it safe and you know, take what comes to you. Pitch to the plate, grounded over to Clark at third. On to second, the turn to first is in time for the double play. Bucknell turns two, erases Critelli and O'Neill to bring up Thomas Russo. Now batting, the third baseman. Bucknell would send up six, seven, eight in the order next half inning as we take a look at this around the horn double play. Sam Clark's been impressive at the hot corner, just gobbling up balls like one of those hungry, hungry hippos. Anything he gets, he just gobbles it up and throws it to the respective base. 
he's really been impressive. He's a slam dunk choice to be on the all-tournament team, uh, regardless of the outcome for Bucknell. Russo with a single back in the second inning, scored on Alex Wojtek's home run. Wojtek the one on deck. Russo the lefty, wide stance in the box. Popped up right at the pitcher, kind of bounced off the plate and was caught easily by Gottesman to get the final out of the inning. So the leadoff single ends up with a 1-2-3 inning thanks to a double play. And Buck now with one final chance, three outs to get three runs here at Fit and Field on the Patriot League Network in the Patriot League Championship game. Holy Cross, three outs away defensively. They'll get to do it in the field here at their home field, Hanover Insurance Park at Fitton Field. They have a three-run lead over the Bucknell Bison, the number four seed that has won the Patriot League Championship twice as a four seed. Looking for their seventh Patriot League title overall. Holy Cross looking for its first, and it's in great position to do so right now after a one-run one, one win yesterday, 4-3 over Bucknell. They look to sweep it today in game one of what could be a doubleheader. However, Holy Cross, after winning, will try and not even get to the game three of the series. Bucknell was down by three in the ninth inning yesterday. Andy did play two at the tying run on third, go ahead run on second before Rafferty fly out. Would love a chance at that kind of situation again here as they're down to their final three outs. And his keeper Rawlings out the plate 0 for three today. A couple of strikeouts against Joe Crevero. Now it's Justin Finan on the mound. 2-0 pitch, skied out to center field. Under it is Austin Mazel. He makes the catch, one out in the inning. Finan came on to start the eighth inning, got the first two outs on the ground. Home run to Sam Clark, a lock to be on the all-tournament team. Then a single by Luke Johnson brought Greg Desenzo out. Just and a calm fine and down a little bit, closed out the frame with a strikeout of John Paul Bell, and now gets the first out to bring up Evan Klugerman. Klugerman is, in fact, a tough guy to strike out, but he's got two Ks today. This one foul off to the left side. He's got 23 walks and 20 strikeouts this year. Fine and trying to finish off the day for the Holy Cross Crusaders. High fly ball, right field. This will go out to Josh Hassel. He's under it. Sun glistening off the shades, and he makes the catch. Two outs for the Crusaders. Evan Madigan coming up. 0 for 3 today. And in fact, no, it will not be Madigan. Luke Hartman will pinch hit. So Hartman, the lefty, called upon for potentially the final at-bat of the Bison season. Born in Seattle, grew up in Birmingham, comes to the plate here in Worcester. Finan, the delivery, misses down low for a ball. Always a competitor, competing with his brother Peter. Competition against fine in here. The 1 0. In there at the knees. Called strike one. Two outs, bottom of the ninth inning for the Holy Cross Crusaders looking for its first ever Patriot League title. The 1 1. Swing and a miss. Hartman has struck out seven times this year. He's taken six walks, hitting eight for 32 overall. Finan, the delivery, grounder foul. Down past the end of the Bucknell dugout. He stays alive. Outs to Rawlings and Klugerman after a fantastic outing by Crevero. Finan has worked so far in inning and two thirds. The one, two, outside, ball two. You can feel it, the crowd on their feet here at Hanover Insurance Park at Fitton Field. 
Bones out. The fans trying to capture the moment. Seven runs on 14 hits for Holy Cross. Four runs on eight hits for Bucknell. Justin Finan settles himself. Readies, winds, delivers the 2-2. This is fouled off. Just a little piece of it there for Luke Hartman. Comes on to replace Evan Madigan, who was 0 for 3 today. Sorry, 0 for 2, including a sacrifice bunt. Finding another 2-2 to Hartman. Outside, we've got a payoff pitch, and you couldn't ask for better drama. Good at bat by Hartman, cold off the bench. Made just his eighth start of the season yesterday. So many close games Holy Cross has played. The payoff pitch, high fly ball, foul into the crowd. Everybody with their hands up falls into a seat. Nobody occupying their seats, especially down the third base line behind the Holy Cross dugout. Yet another payoff pitch coming up. Good battle here for Luke Hartman off the bench for Bucknell. Plenty of fans out on a beautiful Saturday afternoon to see Holy Cross look for its first Patriot League title. Going back is Mazel will not be able to make the play as Luke Hartman comes off the bench in a pinch and has a double to the center field warning track. And all of a sudden the Bucknell Bison have the tying run in the on-deck circle. And that's Brett Smith, one of the most prized Bucknell baseball players in the history of the program. But first, it's up to Chucky Scales to prolong the inning. Scales himself 0 for 3 today. The left-hander will come up against Finan. Might have a pinch runner here, Andy. It's Alex Salem, Patriot League Academic Honor Roll member. He'll pinch run for Luke Hartman, one of seven seniors in the Bucknell Bison. So the pinch runner comes on for the pinch hitter. Salem hasn't attempted a stolen base this year, but it, this is not a steal situation anyways. He just needs to score. Fouled off the plate for Chucky Scales. Hasn't seen a whole lot of action. Had seen 15 career games all as a pinch runner or a pinch hitter coming into this season. Didn't play as a freshman, he's now a senior. All 12 appearances this year have been off the bench as well. Make it 13 with a pinch running appearance. The 0-1 from fine into scales. Soft grounder, this will be right along the third base line, but stays foul where Russo touches it. Good job by Russo. Immediately once that kick foul, just smother that ball immediately. You never know what kind of kicks and turns and quirky moves that baseball can take because that's easily an infield single because Chucky e. Scales the fastest guy on the team if it stays in play. And you don't want to let that roll back fair because at that point Scales is almost all the way to first base. Two outs, bottom of the ninth inning. Justin Finan on the mound. Alex Salem, the runner at second base. Chucky e. Scales at the plate for the Bucknell Bison. The 0-2 on the way, down low. Bucknell showing patience at the plate, keeping this game interesting till the very end. It's a three-run Holy Cross lead. Had scored four unanswered since Bucknell had a two-run home run in the bottom of the first. Fine in the one-two. Grounder over to third, through the hole into left field. Base hit, they'll hold the runner at third. Salem stays there with a two out knock. Back to back hitch, the double and a single put runners on the corners. And wouldn't you know, the <laughs> tying run is at the plate. With one of the most decorated orange and blue baseball players in the history of the program. First, let's flash back to this Chucky e. Scales hit. I talked about it earlier. He's best when he's going the other way. Just slashes that through the left side like a Tony Gwynn caliber hit. Good job by Scott Hedder to hold up Alex Salem. That run doesn't matter. Scales run doesn't matter. What matters is Brett Smith at the plate, who's just one for nine this postseason. Well, he came up, he was 0 for 4 yesterday with four strikeouts and then had a double that ended up being pretty big to keep Bucknell in it. And boy, would that help them today. That would. But you want to be smart on the base pass here. You know, the, the run that matters is at home plate. Salem at third after the single by Scales. 
conservative and smart to keep him there. Smith at the plate takes the 1-0 outside. I think you have to take a strike here, Andy. Looks like George Capen is warming up with your 40 pitches yesterday. Well, just in case. The 2-0 on the outside corner, 2-1. Smith, the unanimous first teamer, up against Justin Finan. The 2 1. High fly ball, left field going back is Bill Schlick to the warning track, to the fence. It's a tie ball game. The first teamer, Brett Smith, comes up and has just his second hit of the series. And none more clutch than that. He drops something on his way from third to home, goes back to get it, touches the plate, and it is seven to seven. The game is extended for Bucknell. Andy, two outs, nobody on. Double, pinch hit, double, single, take another look. Just his third home run all year. We talked about it, the ball carries to left field here at Fit and Field. It just cleared the wall. I mean, maybe even grazed over the yellow padding. What shock and disbelief and jubilation in that dugout. High fly ball going straight back is Mazel at the track. He's got it, and we're going to extra innings. Brett Smith, the senior for Bucknell University has come up absolutely massive to bring us to a 10th inning of play in game two of the Patriot League Championship Series. He extends the Bison season by at least a frame. Back with more in just a moment on the Patriot League Network. Back here at Hanover Insurance Park at Fit and Field, everybody in absolute shock. A three-run home run by Brett Smith after Two outs and nobody on for Bucknell. They were down to their final out in the Patriot League tournament and in their season before the senior comes up, not ready to graduate just yet. What a moment as teammates greet him. Andy, that was his 199th at bat of the season and just his third home run. That means there was a 1.5% chance of him hitting a home run in that at bat, and the odds went Bucknell's way. And they've got a guy who can go deep in Jeff Gottesman, who's already thrown a scoreless inning. Alex Wojtek at the plate now, leading off against Voitisman, uh, against Gottesman, excuse me. Wojtek with a two-run home run in the second inning. It was hit by a pitch in the eighth and then taken off the base pass. Tag out at home plate. Down and in. 1-1 one, one now on Alex Wojtek. Gottesman on the mound, came on in relief of Jack Grayback. Those are your two guys who you would think would be candidates to start game three if it gets that far. Our grounder over to Johnson at short, makes the throw on to first and gets the first out of the inning. Quick defensive replacement, Tyler Winsig is now playing second base. Remember it was Hartman who pinch hit for Madigan, then it was Salem who pinch ran for Hartman, and now it's Winsig who's playing defense for Salem. Whole bunch of changes. Or just a couple of changes here, but a few all over the place, and taking spots in the lineup. And there you see Winsick uh, spotlighted on your screen. How about that at bat by Hartman, though, Andy? Now let's go back. That was a one two count. He's cold off the bench. He's pinch hitting. He worked it full. He pounds a double. Scales flips one into left. Heather holds up the pinch runner, Salem. And then, as you so beautifully chronicled, Brett Smith's majestic blast to left. And boy, I mean, four strikeouts yesterday in his first four at-bats and then had a clutch double that gave Bucknell life. And 0 for 4 today, had a couple of strikeouts. And then the three-run homer to tie the game in the bottom of the ninth inning. And by the way, had, had Danny Rafferty not timed up his ball that well, that would have been a home run <laughs> and Bucknell would have walked off and we'd be getting ready for a third baseball game this weekend. Well outside, another ball to Jared Enders. This is, this is in fact Enders who came on as a pinch runner last inning. 
the Kellen McCormick spot at the plate. Enders this season, most of his action has been off the bench. He's four for 11, has a, had a pinch hit single in the eighth inning last week, and he takes a walk here. And Enders obviously has good speed. He came in the pinch run for a reason. That brings up Chris Rinaldi. He's been on base three times today. Two singles, or excuse me, one double, one single, and then a fielder's choice. And has scored two runs. Both teams, double-digit hits. Three coming in the bottom of the ninth inning for Bucknell. Seven runs apiece on the scoreboard. Also three coming in the bottom of the ninth inning for Bucknell. Runner at first is Enders. Rinaldi at the plate. Outside, once again, Klugerman staying behind it. You know, a running theme in Patriot Championship Baseball, we've talked about a lot, it's worth repeating. It's two out runs, and Holy Cross, and this weekend they have scored 11 runs, seven with two outs. All three of those Bucknell runs with two outs in the bottom of the ninth. Gottesman delivers, a little bit low. Klugerman tried to hold it at the knees, didn't get the call from John Epperson. No. In football, it's like red zone efficiency. Can you get touchdowns in the red zone or field goals? I mean, can you score with two outs or not here in baseball? That's what it's like. Gottesman to the plate, inside. Rinaldi takes, and it's three and one. Now, all of the Holy Cross runs today have been earned despite two Bucknell errors. Those haven't really been costly, though. Holy Cross has definitely take adva taken advantage of opponents' mistakes in this tournament. I think Enders will be off with this pitch here. Three balls and two strikes. I know there's just one out, but he's one of the fastest Holy Cross players, a team that has the fewest stolen bases in the Patriot League, but this might be a good time to pick your spot. When all these swings, runner was going, and the dive in with the throw off target. Will be a stolen base for Chris Rinaldi, uh, for Jared Enders, they're excuse gonna, me. They're going to call interference, though, on the batter. He he uh, perturbed uh, Klugerman in the follow-through, so it's an automatic double play ball. we got to take another look. And look we'll at the see batter. It. He swings, and Absolutely. he steps right, right in front plate. of the catcher, Klugerman, forcing the throw off target. So that brings us to the bottom of the 10th inning. After a clutch 3 1 homer, Bucknell trying to walk off and force game three. Well, would you look at who's coming to the <laughs> plate for the Bucknell Bison? It's Sam Clark, who has two home runs today. It was his classmate, Brett Smith, who had the big shot in the bottom of the ninth inning to score three runs for Bucknell and extend their season by a minimum of one inning. George Capen on the mound now for the Holy Cross Crusaders. Threw 40 pitches yesterday, threw in both games of last week's semifinals, came on with a bases loaded jam in game one, got out of that, had bases loaded in game two as well. A lot of high pressure situations in that game, but he's able to go three and two thirds with five strikeouts there. He comes on today to make his 25th appearance of the season does have a five and one record wants to make it six and one today to get holy cross a win and into the ncaa tournament sam clark one of the more challenging guys to start your outing against a one one down and in seven seven and you really couldn't ask for one a more interesting ball game but two it's kind of Expected is just the way this series has gone, and even the, the Patriot League tournament so far for Holy Cross, where last week against Army Game Two really got interesting. Clark tried to go. Reggie Jackson hit three home runs in a championship game. This did foul off to the left side. That's a good hack and a 3-1 count. But I've been so impressed with Clark. Clark had three career home runs entering this season. He's got two today, making it up to nine on the season. 
Hard line drive into left field. That'll be a base hit, just a single that time. But it's a leadoff single in the bottom of the 10th inning. But Andy, that swing right there to me is more impressive than any of the home runs he's hit this weekend because he's six foot five and he just flings his bat in a payoff pitch the other way and he takes what the pitcher's been giving him. That's what he did last weekend when he had three hits in game two against Navy. And he has it right here. And you need his bat in there. You're not pinch running for, for Sam Clark. Because if this game extends, you can't afford to take him out. Plus, he plays good defense at third. He's done a great job using the whole field. Here's Luke Johnson again squaring around to bunt. Watch out for that here. He did it back in the sixth inning when he had runners on first and second. Sacrificed himself to get runners to second and third. One of those scored. Danny Rafferty, that was the third run Bucknell has scored in every single run in this game has been absolutely important. Of course, we're in a tie ball game in the bottom of the 10th inning. Called strike on Johnson. It's one and one. And Clark yesterday, the double to left field, the home run to left field. Today, first a home run to right, then a home run to left, and a single to left as a left-handed batter. Bunted foul back to the backstop. Johnson does have extra base potential. He has a, uh, a double in this game. And, you know, there's nobody out. There's no need to score from first base right now if you are Coach Heather, who's coaching third, and the Bucknell Bison. Just need one run to get another ball game. Bucknell would like to get back late tonight before graduation tomorrow morning. Pop foul out of play right side. It's over the concession stands here at Hanover Insurance Park. Game two would start about 30, 40 minutes after game one. Well, game three of the series, game two of today's potential doubleheader, if, in fact, it goes that way. George Capen delivers outside two and two. I want to give a quick update to another sport in the Patriot League. Uh, a round of applause for the Navy Midshipmen women's lacrosse team who outlasted North Carolina 16 to 14, the Elite Eight, to advance to the women's lacrosse Final Four. Wow. Navy didn't even win the regular season in the Patriot League. Well done by them. 2-2 Two -two outside for Capen. Full count. I don't think you're sending Clark here. He just doesn't run well enough, Andy. Three two counts. I know coaches sometimes like to do it. Uh, and I know Holy Cross did it last half inning and it resulted in that batter's interference double play. I think you keep Clark at first. High fly ball, center field. Backpedaling a little bit is Mazel, And he's got the catch for the first out of the frame. Keeps the runner Clark on first base and brings up John Paul Bell. Navy women's lacrosse making it to the Final Four, still trying to determine who will represent the Patriot League in the NCAA Baseball Tournament in 2017. And nobody else in the country has gotten a consistent look at a Patriot League team lately as the last four years have all been different teams. Wojtek slides over to keep that ball in front of him. And both these teams are built for May and June. We've seen it last weekend in the semifinals, Andy, this week in the championship series. And there's so much parity in college baseball, not just in the Patriot League. I mean, we saw Coastal Carolina win it all last year. Stony Brook made the College World Series a few years ago. Huge cut there for John Paul Bell. You see Santa Barbara was in it the other, uh, the other year. Definitely get some of the mid-major level schools to win at the, or to at least make it to Omaha. We saw Stony Brook in it not too long ago. Boston College made a super regional last year, and you know, they've always been fighting with the upper echelons in the ACC. Ten teams made it from the ACC right. last year. It's Boston College picked last in the league. Capen battling with John Paul Bell. It's a swing and a miss. It's one and two. Also battling with Sam Clark over on first base. Water has two home runs and now a single. 
Clark is one for one in stolen base attempts this year, but again, do not expect him to go. Let the bats do what they need to do. High fly ball, right center field. Moving over is Mazel, and he's under it to make the catch. Hung up there plenty of time. He could have gotten into foul territory if it was over there. Brings up Kiefer Rawlings, the DH, 0 for 4 today. Rowling's just one for six in the championship series. Check swing, pitch called on the outside corner. Strike one on Rawlings. High fly ball again, this time going back is Hassel and he's at the edge of the track, makes the catch for the third out of the inning. So a leadoff single and three balls into the outfield, but Sam Clark cannot advance at all. And here we go to the 11th inning of play at Fitton Field. Josh Hassel will lead off. He is the number one hitter on the lineup card for Greg Desenja. Walks up to the plate with four hits in today's game. He is four for five with a run score. That was the last run that Holy Cross has put across the plate so far. And Andy, in my opinion, I think he would have been the Patriot League Tournament MVP. He was three outs away from probably being named that. He has four hits today and two RBI, both with two outs. And then yesterday he had the go ahead, which proved to be the game winning two run single after the Rafferty air that extended the inning. On the mound is Jeff Gottesman. And he misses on his first pitch to Hassel outside, one and oh. Again, Gottesman was expected to be the game three starter in this series, but with all hands on deck. The good news for Bucknell, as Hassel takes one on the outside corner for a strike, is that they only took one out from Jack Grayback. So that's basically like he gets up and warms up mm -hmm. an extra time. So he would, I imagine, be the game three starter with that third of an inning in relief in game two of the series, game one of the doubleheader. 3-0 count here to Hassel. Imagine he'll be laying off this one on a base runner. And no, he's got the green light. In fact, it was a 2-1 count as he sent it high into the stands, down to the end of the stands, down the right field line. A two-ball, two-strike count. Gottesman was in the Patriot League all academic team. Two balls and two strikes now to Hassel. And it hit him. Looks like it got him. The umpire signaled on the left elbow. Looks like it may have gotten him on the five. But either way, he trots down to first base. A leadoff base runner with a hit by pitch in inning number 11. Taking a look, it's a breaking ball that just plunks him on the elbow. That's the 16th uh, shoulder. It's the 16th batter that Gottesman has plunked this year, by far most in the Patriot League. Holy Cross has its second hit batter of the game, Alex Wojtek. Also wore one earlier. 37 total hit by pitch this year. And at the plate is Bill Schlick. High in the air, right side, well out of play. Bill Schlick hits in each of his last two at-bats after starting 0 for 3. There's Greg Desenzo. He's been in this championship series four times before. I mean, you thought last year was close. This year was even closer. There's still plenty of time. Up and away to Schlick, 1-1. One and one. And remember, last time Bucknell won it here at Fitton Field, they lost game one right, and then won games two and three. And those were three high-scoring games each time. And this is another high-scoring affair. Wouldn't quite call yesterday high-scoring. Right. But this one would certainly qualify with 14 total runs. We'll get to at least 15 if we have a winner. High cheese from Gottesman. Schlick went after it. One and two. And Schlick was kind of mad at himself for being 
A little overzealous, a little too anxious right there. Trying to swing for a, a three-run home run, which is one runner on. Up and away. That time, Schlick laid off. 14 runs on 26 hits in this ball game. By the way, first pitch was at 12.06. It's 3.41. So we're more than three and a half hours into this ball game. I hope you didn't have dinner reservations, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> I did not. I imagine if Bucknell wins, they'll try and hurry things up before game three. Blooper over the head of the leaping Winsig at second base. A base hit for Bill Schlick. That's three straight for him. Runners on first and second for Holy Cross. Sunset tonight, by the way, is at 8.06. This is another sack bunt situation here for Austin Mazel. He laid one down in the seventh. You have your most feared slugger on deck in Critelli. This is just a slam dunk fun, cho fun choice here for Mazel. There are, of course, lights here at Fit and Field, but I imagine especially Bucknell will want to get out of here with a, a reasonable time after whatever happens, win or lose. Get the seniors back for graduation tomorrow morning. Hopefully feeling great after a championship for them. Holy Cross would just like to end it. They've got a chance with runners on first and second. Nobody out here in the top of the 11th inning. Squaring around to Bunt Mazel. Throw down to second, not in time. Well off the bag was Hassel. But he dives back in time. Took a hard secondary lead, kind of slipped as he scurried back into the second base bag. This is a situation when you have runners on first and second, nobody out, and you're Mazel as you take another look at the snap throw down to second. See, you see uh, stumbling in is Hassel to second base, but it gets back in time. This is a situation, Andy, where you want to bunt the ball to Sam Clark at third base. You want third base to be unoccupied to make sure you're doing your job of advancing the runners 90 feet. If you deaden this in front of home play, Klugerman's ultra aggressive. He'll get the force out of third. Mazel 0 for 4, the sack bunt. Squaring around again is Mazel. Pulled it back, and it's another ball, 2 and 0. And same thing goes if you bunt it too hard back to the pitcher. Gottesman fields his position well as a quick pickoff move. He could get the lead runner in the force out of third. But you don't want to knock it down too much right in front of the plate and give Klugerman an easy opportunity to pick it up and throw down to Clark. You see, it's really the shortstop, Johnson, who's charging in. He'll want to try and make the play at, towards home plate on the bunt. And throwing back to second, covering his wincing. And in fact, it's Clark is coming in, and Johnson is hustling over to third to, to be the cover there. Makes a little bit more sense rather than making Johnson come all the way in from the shortstop position. At that point, it's basically a foot race between him and the runner, Hassel. The 2-0, bunted foul off the body of Klugerman. He looks so good, sack bunting back in the seventh. He kind of deadened the ball. He caught it. You want to have some give to it. And he just kind of pushed and reached for that bunt attempt. And that's why you saw that foul into the netting. But he's got one more attempt to bunt until there's two strikes. Now you still could bunt with two strikes, but then you have no margin for error. So the bunt should still be on here. It's Hassel on second, Schlick at first. Each with at least three hits today. Hassel, in fact, with five. Throw back to second. Again, Hassel back in time. A couple of guys that you're certainly not running for. Mazel at the plate, and 0 for 4, sacrifice bunt. Anthony Cortelli on deck, he's got a home run plus a single and a walk today. He has at least put the ball in play each of his other two times up. 2 and 1, nobody out, runners on first and second. Again, a bunt. This one down back to the pitcher. Sliding into third. The throw is in time. 
Bucknell gets the lead runner. And the sacrifice just ends up in a fielder's choice for Mazel. So it ends up still with runners on first and second, but now with one out for Anthony Critelli. We talked about Josh, uh, Jeff Gottesman has a propensity to field his position really well. That was a bunt that was just too hard back to the pitcher. And then on the wheel play, it's Luke Johnson who covers third in place of Clark who charged in. You take another look. It is definitely an out. It was just a force play. Nice. That's a nice job by Luke Johnson to act like a first baseman. Good stretch to catch that ball as quick as possible. That's excellent defense by Buck. Now just what Gottesman and pitching coach Jason Knights and Scott Heather, the head coach, ordered up. Here's Anthony Critelli. There's another look at the bunt play from the over-the-top look. Definitely out. Critelli with eight home runs on the season. Inside. And it would have been interesting if they had laid down the sack bunt. All right, second and third, one out. Would they have intentionally walked Critelli with first base open? The 1-0 up top, it gets away from Klugerman. Both runners will advance. And now two in scoring position with one out for the Crusaders. Wild pitch thrown by Jeff Gottesman. Yeah, Klugerman, I mean, this is a catchable ball. It'll go down as a wild pitch, but he just took his eye off the ball momentarily. And now Jason Knights, the longtime pitching coach, Mifflinburg native, former standout southpaw pitcher at East Carolina University, will have some words with the entire defense to go over some strategy, maybe end up walking Critelli. It's already a 2-0 count here, Andy. To me, I think you put Critelli on, you set up the force everywhere. The only negative about that is it forces you to throw strikes to Cam O'Neill because the bases are juiced. As for Coach Desenzo, He's gathering up his team to discuss some um, base running tactics. This is, this is drama. This is strategy. This is championship baseball at its finest. Extra innings in an elimination game for Buck now. And in a game that definitely Holy Cross wants to win because the last thing you want to do is go down to a game three where they've already used some, some key cogs in their bullpen. Knights walks off. Runners on second and third, one out in the top of the 11th inning. Anthony Critelli at the plate, the now tied for the program record in career home runs with 24. Also atop the total bases list. They are going to intentionally walk him. Notch is going to be the now major league strategy of holding up four fingers and saying, take your base. And with one out, setting up a double play and letting a guy reach and not swing the bat that is so dangerous. Not a terrible strategy there for Bucknell. We'll see how it works out for them. And Anthony Critelli now on base. Cam O'Neill, again, has not had a fantastic couple of games here against Bucknell. His career against the Bison has been much better than the last two days, but... He's 0 for 4 with a walk today, grounding into a double play last time up. Exactly, and you hit it on the head. He grounded into a double play his last time up, and that's what Bucknell's thinking. A double play allows them to survive unscathed. First pitch to O'Neill swinging. That was right down the pipe. Bases are loaded. Bill Schlick on third, Austin Mazel on second, Anthony Critelli with the free pass on first. And I think DeCenzo is just telling Cam O'Neill to calm down. Shorten up your swing. A sack fly would do the job. It would break this 7-7 tie. The best arm for Bucknell is John Paul Bell out in left field. The junior O'Neill facing off against Gottesman, the sophomore for Bucknell. Oh one. O'Neill watches it all the way. Outside for a ball. Goddess been trying to keep the ball down and induce a ground ball. Hit batter to lead off the inning, was forced out at third. Schlick the single, Mazel the bunt, fielder's choice. That's what forced Hassel out. Swing and a miss for O'Neill. 
That's a big slider. Got us been thrown all game. And he hasn't featured it a lot. He's primarily a fastball guy, two seam, four seam. But every now and then he'll keep you honest with that wipeout slider. And maybe he goes back to that with two strikes. Although if you're Klugerman, you have to knock down anything. If it skips by you, we've already seen a wild pitch. This inning that's loomed large, it could be costly. The 1-2 to O'Neill inside, gobbling it up on the ground is Klugerman. 2-2. Two and two. Right on cue. I mean, Klugerman, like a hockey goalie, just smothering that baseball. Keeping this score intact at seven apiece. A lot of hockey players on both of these rosters, really. I believe Klugerman was one of them. On the 2-2 two -two count. Gottesman delivers up and in a full count. And that was the only negative about walking Anthony Critelli is that there's just no margin for error. You force in a run, then it's 8-7, and there's still bases loaded one out. Now you just kind of have to hope that Cam O'Neill is a little bit wound up and can't make solid contact with one. With one. The payoff pitch, inside ball four, walks in a run. Holy Cross on top, 8-7 in the 11th inning. Bill Schlick absolutely fired up on his way back to the dugout. That's a great take, that's a borderline pitch. I guess it was a bit up and in to the right-hander O'Neill. We should take another look. Let's see this pitch. Yep, it was up and in. Klugerman tried to frame it, brought it back across the plate, but not buying it was John Epperson, the home plate umpire. So it's 8-7 Holy Cross lead, still threatening for more. Thomas Russo has a hit today. That was all the way back in the second inning, though. First of five at-bats. 0 for since then, did reach on a wild pitch, swinging strike three in the fifth. Russo, the third baseman, stepping in. At least has the lead now, but certainly would like some extra runs. Inside, ball one. Jeff Gottesman in a do-or-die situation. Mike Castellani went six and a third today. Had eight strikeouts on the afternoon. Then Nate Grisius came on an inning and a third, left in trouble. Jack Graybeck got him out of it. Just a third of an inning for him, as now it's a 2-0 count on Russo. Nobody up in the Bucknell bullpen. This is Gottesman's frame. Nobody up in the Holy Cross bullpen either. George Capen will still be out there. 8-7, Holy Cross on top by one. Off the plate for Russo. It's a three ball count. And Gottesman in danger of walking in his second straight run. The first one he did to himself with the intentional walk to Critelli. That one right through the middle called strike one. Russo wasn't even thinking about swinging. Three one outside. Another run walked in for Holy Cross. Take what your opponent gives you. Austin Mazel comes across to score. Anthony Critelli now on third base. Cam O'Neill on second. Thomas Russo on first. Then Alex Voitik. Already a home run today, steps to the plate. Two runs have scored this inning, Andy. One ball has left the infield. And that was a little flare over Tyler Winsick's head at second base. Hit by pitch for Hassel to start things out. Bill Schlick with that flare you mentioned. And a fielder's choice, Austin Mazel trying the sacrifice bunt. Ended up taking Hassel out at third base. And three straight walks, the first of which was intentional to load the bases instead of pitching to Anthony Critelli. Here's Alex Wojcik, takes one high. 
and Gottesman just hasn't been able to find the zone. Again, Scott Heather said he, he's got the best stuff out of any of his pitchers, just hasn't been consistent. Well, he can't repeat his delivery. A 9-7 Holy Cross lead. Big cut for Wojtek. He was thinking grand slam. Enders is on deck, came on as a pinch runner, took a walk in his first plate appearance. And as long as there's no double play here hit into by Wojtek, Enders will get up again. 1-1, another cut by Wojtek. May have just got a piece of it, doesn't really matter though. Now a one ball, two strike count. Top 11. It was a three-run home run in the bottom of the ninth inning for Brett Smith, the senior, after two out, nobody on. Up high for Wojtek, two and two. Luke Hartman battled back from a one-two count, got it full, and then hit a double. Chucky scales with a single, and Brett Smith, the three-run shot to tie things up and send us to extras. Wojtek with a 2-2 count at the plate. Outside, good patience here for Holy Cross. Looking for their fourth straight walk to force in a third straight run if Wojtek can get one outside the zone from Gottesman. Out goes the catcher, Klugerman. Settle down the sophomore. 13 seniors on the Holy Cross roster. Wojtek is one of them. I think Klugerman just said, look, this is a 156 hitter. You better throw the ball down the middle of the plate. If he hits another home run like he did back in the second inning, so be it. But challenge him. Make Holy Cross earn it. The 3-2. High and tight ball for again. Another run walks in. 10-7. Holy Cross is on top of the Bucknell Bison by three. Top of the 11th inning, and it is just not going well for Jeff Gottesman. And here comes Scott Heather. He will go to the bullpen. We'll make a quick pitching change here on the Patriot League Network. The Bison down by three, and the base is loaded. The new pitcher for the Bucknell University Bisons, it's sinking sidewinder from Frisco, Texas, Mike Stevens. <clears throat> he inherits a big-time jam. The bases are loaded, still just one out after back-to-back-to-back bases-loaded walks issued by Jeff Gottesman. It's Mike Stevens in the pitch. This inning's taken so long, Andy. Jeff Capen's actually rewarming up in the bullpen for Holy Cross. It has been quite a long frame. This will be batter number eight as Jared Enders comes back up to the plate. He took a walk in his only plate appearance so far and then trying to steal second. He was in there safe. But Chris Rinaldi called for batter's interference. Base is loaded now, and that pitch hits Enders. First pitch out of the bullpen is a hit by pitch, and yet another free run comes in for the Crusaders. The furthest this ball has, uh, a ball has traveled this inning was about 120 feet. That little flare over Tyler Winston's hag, Winston's hag in shallow right field. Take another look at it. Comes out and it just catches him on the backside. Even if he'd backed out of the way, I'd have caught him even harder on the hip. Well outside, faking his snap throw and faking a dive back to first is Enders with Danny Rafferty coming in. One zero now to Rinaldi, squaring around to Bunt. Another fake throw, and that's Thomas Russo getting his uniform dirty. And four runs have scored in this inning, not really by a whole lot of Holy Cross's own doing. Jeff Gottesman threw 59 pitches, 
36 balls and 23 strikes. That's not good. Not what you're looking for in your line. Rinaldi puts down a bunt, touched in foul territory by Klugerman, tagged both the runner and home plate, not even paying attention to the umpire. Well, if he had tagged the runner, it actually he would have actually had to tag the runner coming home because the force would have been nullified. So Klugerman was just <laughs> trying to do anything he could to try desperately get it out. Uh, I mean, heads up play by him to just play hard until the umpire called something. But yeah, he was he was trying for the impossible double play. I don't hate the thought. At least putting the effort into it. Now Chris Rinaldi with a 2-1 count. It's an 11-7 Holy Cross lead. Outside, ball three. And all of a sudden, the Bison just can't find the strike zone. And what was the one of the themes heading into this weekend? Can Holy Cross dig into that Bucknell bullpen? They really haven't had a whole lot of action lately. Quite at the end of the regular season or at the beginning of May with complete games. Rinaldi thought he had ball four there, but a strike called by John Epperson. A complete games by Van Hoos and Castellani last week against the Navy midshipmen in the semifinals. Held the team's, uh, the league's top offense to just one run through two games. 3-2 to Rinaldi on the outside corner. Once again, Rinaldi thought he had ball four. He will head back to the dugout with strike three. Strike zone may have been expanding a little bit on that end. Let's take another look over the top cam. Klugerman does a, as good of a job as framing pitches you're going to see in the league. Uh, helped out his good pal Stevens on that occasion. Josh Hassel coming to the plate for the second time this inning. He was hit to lead things off. Sidearm delivery comes in high for Hassel. Mike Stevens working for the 15th time this year, two and one. Has had some issues finding the zone. Hit by pitch and a strikeout though. There's two at bats here today. High fly ball out to center field. Under it is Smith, and that mercifully ends the inning for the Bucknell Bison. They have dug themselves quite a hole now, trailing 11-7 to, to the bottom of the 11th, and Brett Smith will need to come up again if Bucknell has any chance. Already a game-tying three-run shot. Nobody gets on ahead of him. He'd have a chance for a grand slam. We'll see what happens next on the Patriot League Network. George Kafin still out there. Indu is second inning of relief for the Holy Cross Crusaders. They have a leadoff single, but then retired three in a row in the middle third of the Bison order. Sees the bottom third this time. Evan Klugerman will lead things off. Then we'll see Tyler Winsig and Chucky Scales. Well, all you can hope for if you're Bucknell, you need to get the tying run of the plate. So you need to jam the bases. It's a situation here where if Klugerman, Winsig, and Scales can all reach and load the bases, that brings up Brett Smith, who's already got the heroics in this one, the three-run homer to tie the game in the bottom of the ninth inning. A couple of quick pitches here from Capen as a 1-1 one, one to count on Klugerman. And let's see how Capen fares in this frame. That was a really long 30-minute half inning. Fouled off the top of the screen. And he already threw 40 pitches less than 24 hours ago. He's a guy that's going to get out there and compete. He wants the ball in his hands as long as his arm is attached to his body. Three and two-thirds last week after getting out of a pressure situation in game one. Through that three and two-thirds in game two. One-two count. Keeping steady as pitched in now all four games of this Patriot League tournament. High pop-up foul to the left, and you have to imagine, should this game get to a game three, Capen will be in Greg DeCenzo's head saying, let me get back out there. I know I've thrown a lot of pitches, but I want to go. Again, spoiled left. One, two. 
Cape and leads the team in appearances, leads the team in wins. Brendan King had been just behind him in ERA before yesterday's outing. Line drive into right field, and that's a base hit for Evan Klugerman. Now what were we thinking in the ninth inning? First two batters, Kiefer Rawlings and Evan Klugerman, fly out to center, fly out to right. Two out, nobody on. But all right, Holy Cross might be doing this. And then Luke Hartman comes up to the plate in a pinch hit appearance. Battles back from a 1-2 count. Works it full before his double. Chucky Scales comes up. Takes a handful of pitches, couple of foul balls, single. They hold Alex Salem, the pinch runner, at third. And then Brett Smith knocks one over the fence. His third, his second big hit of the series. Had the double yesterday to keep Bucknell in it. Nothing in two here to Tyler Winsig. Outside, one and two. Winsick struggled in the semifinals, 0 for 5 with 5 Ks. That's why he didn't start yesterday. That's why he didn't start today. But a chance for him to, to come through in a pivotal moment. Just keep on passing that baton. On the outside corner, strike three. He knew it. Right back to the dugout. That brings up Chucky Scales. George Capen will try and finish off this game after Holy Cross Got four runs across the plate in the top of the 11th inning. We're now four hours and four minutes after first pitch. First pitch here to Scales, fouled off to the left side above the grandstands. Scales making his 42nd start of the season today. Had been a player off the bench in some key situations the last couple of years. Had that key single in the ninth after starting 0 for 3 today. Look over at the runner on first. And he's Evan Klugerman after lead off single to right. A 2-1 count to Scales. Bottom of the 11th inning. At Hanover Insurance Park, the 2-1, fouled straight back. An absolutely beautiful afternoon for baseball in Worcester, Massachusetts. Temperature getting up to 70 degrees. Much more pleasant than Thursday afternoon when it was 95, or even yesterday when it was in the upper 80s. Here's a soft looper over towards first base, diving in but not in time is Chucky Scales. He is retired 4-1 as over to cover was Capen. Klugerman does advance to second, but down to another two-out situation. Brett Smith coming to the plate. Doesn't have a chance to tie it, but could still keep Bucknell in it. Capen used his long strides to beat Scales the bag. Take another look at this play. Bang, bang play, but he is out. Dove in and first pitch, a strike to Brett Smith. Capen would get the win and if he hangs on. Would be his sixth of the year. 0-1 breaking ball in there, called strike two. Holy Cross took two hit by pitches and four walks in the top of the 11th inning to score four runs and take an 11-7 lead. Gaping delivers outside corner, called strike three. Mission accomplished for the Crusaders. George Capen strikes out the final batter and the Holy Cross Crusaders are Patriot League champions for the first time in school history and will go to the NCAA tournament for the first time since 1978. 
mobbed by his teammates just behind the pitcher's mound is George Capen. Got the call on the outside corner as the coaching staffs exchange pleasantries along the third base line, but the emotion is evident for the Holy Cross Crusaders on the field behind the pitcher's mound. There's Greg Dicenzo jogging back to the fans on the third baseline, climbs up into the stands and he's got someone to say hello to. An absolutely jacked up Greg Dicenzo saying hello to his father. Said earlier this week, his father a big part of why he's still at Holy Cross. Able to come to just about every game the Crusaders play. Holy Cross absolutely jubilant. A dejected Bison squad waiting for the handshake line and they will congratulate Holy Cross on their first Patriot League title. Bucknell tried to do it here again for the first time since they won a championship at Fitton Field in 2010. They had also won a couple times since then. They were champions in 2014 as the top seed. Lost in the semis last year, but the, se the story for this year's senior class will continue. The fat lady hasn't sung, and nobody's written the, e the end on the story of the 2017 Crusader baseball team. First Patriot League championship in school history. They jog out to left field, and still the emotion absolutely evident as it has been in just about every big play situation that Holy Cross has had in this postseason. The postseason will continue as the Crusaders advance to the NCAA tournament for the first time as Patriot League champions. The trophies are being brought out onto the field. You see Justin Fine in there. He's giving George Capen an especially big hug because Finan gave up the three-run homer to Brett Smith that tied things up in the bottom of the ninth inning. But Capen able to finish off the job with the offense giving up or taking the four runs with four walks and two hit by pitch in the 11th inning. For the entire production crew and my color commentator, Justin Antwell, I'm Eddie Town. Thanks for tuning in to the Patriot League Network on Campus Insiders for this Patriot League Championship Series of which the Holy Cross Crusaders are champions.